What is going on, you guys? We're doing some some live streaming, and yeah, that's that is it. We're doing some live streaming, and they're gonna be doing the conversion kit unboxing here shortly, so we can hang out and talk about it a little bit before this goes totally live. So come on in, hang out. Have a good time. We're going to we're going to do this, um, yeah. And hopefully we won't have sound over overlays. Uh, I got everything separated, so it should be good. And they're uh, going to be doing all three conversion kits, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and share that we are live. Sharing this out. All right. So, yeah, we're getting ready. They did confirm they're going to be doing all three. So that's that's good. They're going to try and get all things on camera there if you can't watch twitch at the office and maybe all you have is YouTube that's what I'm here for because I got you covered so so that will hopefully be good uh, mm -hmm. all right so while we are waiting how are you guys doing Anybody going to Gen Con? I got my uh, ticket for the in-flight brief, and I am kind of excited about that. So that's uh, that's cool. I didn't think I thought they were sold out, and I got an invite. So, mm. so that's cool. <clears throat> I'm curious about um, I'm curious about like a lot of the Legends characters. Uh, so, a million TIE Interceptors, I don't know if you really have a million TIE Interceptors. I kind of doubt that. I kind of doubt that you actually have a million. I will not be going to Dragon Con. I can only go to certain conventions, but I am already booked for Gen Con. I will be at Dice Tower Con in Orlando, most likely, in July, and I am planning tentatively to go to Celebration 2019 in Chicago, but we're going to see. It's still kind of early out for that one, but those are like the next big ones even. We got people from Norway, from the UK. Yes, in-flight report should be fun. I'm really hoping they finally give us some Armada news, although I honestly, I kind of wanted it today. I didn't want to wait all the way until Gen Con for Armada news. So, yeah. Well, we're just waiting. We're chilling. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I talked to a lot of people at the last Star Wars celebration. That was actually a lot of fun. So it's a lot of work being on your feet like the whole time, but tired. Always very, very tired at the end. So let's see. Let's see. What are we going to do? <laughs> One of the biggest things. So I'm also in Twitch, and so I'm pulling this from Twitch. This isn't, you know, just so you know, I'm not trying to tell you guys that this is the only place you can watch this. I'm just kind of re rebroadcasting it with so we can watch it together uh, I've got a separate audio feed so I can turn my mic down so you won't hear me over these guys well hopefully not too much and let me, let me know and give me feedback once they start <clears throat> but uh, yeah the idea is my goal is just to like we can watch it together we can talk about it something amazing shows up we can be like whoa together so. 
from that would be kind of cool. Uh, all right, all right, let's see. People are talking about the different ships they want to see, different Falcon pilots. I've um, I heard that they're getting rid of a lot of the Legends pilots, or at least some of them. Like, I don't think we have Juno Eclipse anymore in the TIE Advanced, you know. So, um, I'm wondering what other pilots didn't make it in and got replaced with <clears throat> other pilots. And if Juno isn't there, when are we getting Juno? Uh, is, you know, that's a good... I just asked the Twitch guys if Juno Eclipse is no longer here. Do you think that means Star Killer and Juno are coming back to canon in some new format soon? We'll see what the crowds think. What do you guys think? Let me know. Um, and uh, AJ asks uh, what faction they're going to be doing all three faction unboxings. So that's going to be exciting. Defender will be interesting. That will be because, like any of the ships that had titles, like I'm hoping the titles end up getting like incorporated into the ship, especially when those titles were fixes. But with the Defender, you have two titles, so how are they going to do that? <laughs> What's going on? Just saying hi to everybody that's joining us. We've got about five more minutes until they start well technically six on my clock but very very soon we're gonna have it so yeah I think um, generic titles started to get overused way too much kind of defeat the purpose of what they think a, a title really is What ship do you have there? Oh, this is a Fang fighter, but <laughs> it's a special Fang fighter. I'm calling it the uh, pro a Protectorate, you know, a Concord Dawn Protectorate. Like, oh, it's A? That's You you're, you give it a generic name? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> imagine if you named your kids. Oh, I'm naming this, this kid Human Child Number One. Oh, what a great name. And, and here we have a special Human Child Number Two. Wow, that's amazing. And our third, well, we couldn't afford the title for him. So he's just the third. He doesn't get the human child title because he couldn't afford it. Taser face. <laughs> uh, yep. That was funny. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I think... There, apparently there's some confusion in the Twitch right now as to everybody's expectations. Some people are expecting to see every card teased. And some people are saying that FFG said they are not teasing every single card. So here's what I'm going to tell you guys, since I will be at Gen Con and I will be getting all these. If they don't tease every card, I will definitely uh, be doing unboxings before general release so hopefully I'll get those out to you right away maybe I'll get lucky and I'll get a review copy early I need to I need to I need to check in on that and see if I'm eligible it's hard to get review copies of stuff you have to beg and you have to it, it becomes a little embarrassing you have to grovel 
Or sometimes you're just lucky. I don't know. I've tried everything. I tried everything to get Legion. Couldn't couldn't get that early. Oh, so I saw a really good question in here. Um, a user asked, uh, is Guri going to have Calculate while other Star Viper put, uh, uh, fighters have Focus instead, since Guri's a droid? And droids were going to have Calculate instead of Focus. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So if you are just joining us, this game is, uh, or this stream is for the conversion kits for X-Wing 2.0. Uh, FFG is going to be unboxing all three conversion kits. So we're going to get to see what new cards are going to be coming out when X-Wing 2.0 launches. And hopefully this will cue some people in as to the value of what you're actually getting. Because if you've got a couple, you know, if you've got a little bit of everything, if you're going to have to buy, if you're going to start with all three factions or you're not just going to go in with one faction, you're looking at close to a $200 investment. Um, in some cases, less. In some cases, more. Um, around 150 but you need the core set too, so... Um, and so if you're going to spend $200 on day one to use the ships you already have, what are you really getting? A lot of people are upset about that. I'm okay with that. I, although initially, I think I was upset because of the fact that I think you're getting so much new stuff. And so it's turning your 1.0 into a whole new game that's far more polished and cleaned up and has new mechanics and um, while it's also being familiar. So that's what I'm expecting. That's what I'm hoping for. One minute and counting. This is exciting. What's going on, everybody else that joined us? One minute to go. One minute. I am ready. No, I, I Sky Skywalter DBZ. I, I totally agree. Two hundred dollars for a whole new game with hundreds of ships, and you're getting multiples of each. Uh, and this new game is going to be a, a money saver in, in, as a whole because you can just stick with one faction and you don't have to buy across the aisle anymore. Um, what events am I planning to check out at Gen Con? I will probably be teaching games while I'm at Gen Con, so I'm there to work. I will probably be free in the evenings, depending on when they have me working, because I'll be working at the FFG booth most likely. Um, unless they have me, all, I, I don't really have a set schedule yet, so I don't know what exactly I'll be doing, but I'm going there primarily. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Hello, X-Wing fans, and welcome to the live unboxing of the second edition conversion kits. Uh, I'm Alex Davey, one of the developers on this project, so you know and I am joined by uh, Frank Brooks and Max Brook. Uh, we're really excited to be able to show off a ton of stuff from second edition today. Um, if you're just joining us and you're, you're not super familiar with the purpose of these products, essentially what these are are conversion kits that allow you to bring your first edition ships, uh, bases, plastic, and um, everything that you've collected for the last uh, six years of X-Wing into second edition. Um, they're packed with dials, punch board, tons of cards, and we're going to dive in and check that out. So we're going to be opening the Rebels first. The audio's loud. And we are actually going to show you a generic ship and a dial from every single ship in second edition. So uh, get your screen caps ready because we are going to dive deep on this oh stuff. My. Why did I not bring like a tool? Use your teeth. Get in there. All right, you got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Fine quality uh, saran wrap, plastic wrap, impervious. It's a pretty big box. So as you can see, it's quite a bit of punch board, <laughs> dial connectors. Medium bases, There's ships, and a rather more ships. large oh, yeah. number of ship and upgrade cards. Some more upgrades. A lot of you have been asking, you know, will my favorite uh, pilots get converted over? You know, what are what are the <laughs> ship counts for each ship? Um, how many right. of the people from first edition made it into second edition? More and okay. uh, That's what I can tell you is there are there are actually more ships and more named pilots in second edition than there ever were in first. So. Wow. Uh, we've actually pilots. expanded on this content quite a bit. 
um, a lot of the ships that uh, had fewer pilots are getting some more. Uh, there's going to be tons of X-Wings, TIE Fighters, all kinds of stuff. And we'll go through a few of those uh, right now. Sure. Um, Do we want to talk about this? Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Um, so if you are an existing player and you have no need to purchase uh, additional you know, single ship products, um, each of these conversion kits has the additional pilots that you'll be getting in, uh, that you would have gotten in the, the newer products. So these are pilots that didn't exist at all in first edition. Um, uh, you know, pilots like Evan Verlaine, uh, Nora Wexley in a Y-Wing, that kind of thing. So um, these are all coming in the conversion kits as well. So there's absolutely no need for existing players to purchase individual X-Wing ship packs unless they want more, uh, more ships or the articulating X-Wing S-foils and that kind of thing. Or the prettier Y-Wing. Or the, or the more attractive Y-Wing, yeah. yeah. Some of the sculpts will be revamped in, in second edition uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. And some of the paint jobs as well. Like yeah, the some of the paint one. jobs, the slave one, the, uh, the fang fighter moves, of course, um, which is pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, you, you guys want to just uh, spoil Sorry, what your favorite uh, pilot from uh, from the Rebels is, or pa favorite, favorite or card? Pi yeah, I'll sure. pilot or upgrade card. Start Let's digging for Let's mine. Start, now. Yeah, I'm gonna try to look for mine. All right, I'll oh, dig, I found yours. I'll dig mine out as well. It's right at the top. It's right, right at the top of this pile. Yeah, I like the new S foils. So, in first edition, we only had them in fixed position. At the very end of the game, we were able to squeeze it in in Wave 14, but. Uh, yeah, uh, and we didn't want to do it in part because the model didn't do it. Right, mm -hmm. it felt a little weird to to do it otherwise, but yeah. So we've got the double side. Yeah, these are these are really cool. I think this is a really neat mechanic. Um, this is a new uh, slot icon called the config, and what it represents is ships that can have sort of a, a multi-state. Um, you got ships like the U-wing or the X-wing with its opening and closing S foils, and we can actually represent that in game with these config cards. So here's the open position, locked in attack position. Basically, your ship is as it appears on your ship card. But if you close the S-foils, you gain a little bit of maneuverability at the expense of firepower. I believe these have been spoiled before, but as you can see, you get uh, focus into red boost. You get boost, but you lose your primary attack value is lowered by one. However, if you're packing torpedoes, that's not necessarily a problem because those are not affected by the uh, closed S-foil position. So that's a really fun card. We've got a few configs in the game already. We look forward to more configs in the future. My favorite card is the revamped Arvel Crinid. I love A-Wings, as, uh, as many people know. Uh, probably my favorite Rebel ship. And uh, Arvel Crinid never really saw a, a, a huge place in the competitive Ooh, meta, but I think the new one is actually a lot of fun. Um, essentially, not only can he uh, perform attacks at range zero, which is touching, um, he also is able to use his boost action to actually boost into other ships. So he's, he's a much more uh, able to actually utilize that range zero attack in, um, in second edition. So I'm excited to see Crinid on some tables. I actually think he's a pretty solid competitive choice with his uh, revamped version. And uh, my favorite card from this kit touching. is the newly updated version of Sabine Wren. Um, and Sabine is obviously a card a lot of people liked a lot in first edition, and some people were somewhat frustrated with in first edition. <laughs> yeah, she's a powerhouse. She's a powerhouse. And uh, we really wanted to keep the theme of Sabine, mm -hmm. playing with bombs, um, uh, being this sort of utility card, but we wanted to push this idea we see of her where she's kind of got this bag of tricks, this toolbox. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so she gets this array of tokens. She only gets to use each one once, but when they go, when you, your bombs go off, you get to toss these effect tokens out there. So she's an interesting way to splash a lot of the effects that we see on uh, red and orange tokens uh, into any list that has bombs. Well, and one of the things that I really like about uh, Sabine in this new crew design is that I think Sabine is one of those characters who really kind of blurs faction identity mm. because she's a very scummy mm. kind of rebel, right? Yeah. And you know, in, in terms of just just theme, she's she's from the underworld. You know, she's she was a former you know Black Sun contractor. She actually comes from this uh, fringe kind of association. And and the Mandalorians in, are very and the Mandalorians too, exactly. But and so in the game, you know, yeah, the scum yeah, faction is the dirty tricks yeah. faction. It's the it's the hijinks faction. And I think Sabine has a lot of that flavor in this new crew card, so I really, I really enjoyed that about her as well. Yeah, I guess I, I want to highlight how it comes with four oh, medium yes, bases. Oh, yes, the medium base. We can put those 
on the uh, it also comes on with the camera four here. Four little converter pegs. Yeah, these are these so. are rather interesting. This is the the way that you can run. Of course, in first edition, a lot of ships kind of fell in between the small and large category, and this conversion peg. If your ship was originally a, a small ship oh, in first cool. edition, uh, it can go onto the medium base like so. And if it was originally a large ship, you just use the uh, the, lar the normal large ship peg, as you can see with the uh, the U wing here. So yeah, the medium base is, is rather an interesting uh, little tactical wrinkle. Uh, it's a it's a bit of a new size to get used to, and I think that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it also comes with the condition cards with mm -hmm. the unique backs. Yep, these are pretty classic. And then as promised, we're just going to take you through the uh, generics and dials for all the Rebel Faction ships. There's all the ship cards. So we're going to start here with just your, your X-Wing. These have been spoiled to some extent before, but here you can see the Blue Squadron Escort, the low-level generic, and the X-Wing dial there. X-Wing Dial has gotten some major improvements. It's gotten more uh, blue maneuvers in second edition, so it's a lot more flexible. And it's also gotten three Talon rolls. Uh, combined with its barrel roll, that makes the ship a lot more flexible to, to fly, a lot less predictable, and just a, just a better ship in a lot of ways, a better, yeah. and, better and more fun ship. Sure. Yeah, especially is, in tandem with the S-Foils. Yes, yes. The, the X-Wing is definitely deserving of its uh, most improved. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, I would say so. Although we have done our best to improve a lot of the early well, ships. And on that subject. Yes, the Y-Wing. The Y-Wing has gained so much in terms of uh, what its capabilities are now. I mean, it, it never used to have a barrel roll. That's extremely helpful. The dial has been slightly improved, as you can see here. Um, it's still, you know, not the most nimble of starfighters. We wanted to make sure that that theme was well represented. Um, and then the one thing that you can't see, obviously, on the cards, because it'll be app-based, is the, uh, the upgrade icons. But I can tell you that the Y-Wing has a ton of them. It's extremely versatile, extremely customizable starfighter to represent the many different roles in the alliance that it played. So it has bombs. It has a gunner slot. Uh, <clears throat> most of the elite, talent, uh, elite pilots have the talent slot. Um, it, it basically has most of the mechanics that the Y-Wing should have, or it has all the mechanics that the Y-Wing should have, that it, that it didn't have in first edition just by virtue of being make it bigger. Of, you know, one of the very first ships released. Um, so we're really happy that we were able to go back in and, and give it everything that, you know, canonically it had. It's, an, it's a total Swiss Army knife starfighter, and you can build this in tons of different ways with turrets, with bombs, as a torpedo ship. And another feature of it, while you have it up there, is the red barrel roll. Yes, the red barrel roll, very, very handy. Um, that gives the Y-Wing a lot of flexibility. Uh, you can see me completely squander a Y-Wing on the uh, Team Covenant <laughs> playthrough as I get it immediately destroyed, but I assure you, if used properly, the barrel roll is a, <laughs> is a pretty ex excellent feature sure, of the, sure. the Y-Wing. Well, that leads us to a good a segue to a ship that you are notoriously good with. Yes, I love these little puppies, and the A-Wing in second edition is better than ever. Uh, it is well worth its points, um, and it can be outfitted in so many different ways. So one of the cool things about second edition is, of course, the ship ability, and the A-Wing has one of my favorites, which is vectored thrusters. Uh, essentially, after any action it performs, it can boost. There we go. So it's really leveraging its incredible speed. Um, it's a red boost action, but it has perhaps the best, no, it's straight up the best dial in terms of blues in the game. Uh, it's got a full uh, suite of uh, two-speed blue maneuvers, right and then it has the three, four, and five blues. So very much the way that it used to be, but it's also gained Segnor's loops. So it's everything that was great about the A-Wing dial in first edition, plus Segnor's Loops, which is a really great repositional tool. Uh, it's got five different actions. It's got target lock. And just being able to boost target lock or boost focus regularly with the A-Wing nice um, is, a, is a huge feature of this ship. Uh, it'll, it'll have missiles. So, uh, and it comes in at a pretty low price point. So it's a very, very nice little addition to, uh, to a Rebel squad. Of course, we have Phoenix Squadron here. Uh, that's also a new addition to the game. Phoenix Squadron? Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. That makes sense. What's up right. next? Ooh, the B oh, the B-Wing, yes. They're only showing us two B-Wings are extra pilots, cool. By the way. You may notice with a lot of these ships, we have readjusted their hull and shield values. Um, that is in an effort to make the damage deck more relevant to the Rebel faction and, and a little more fair. Um, a lot of the crit effects, you know, were only really applicable to scum and when you're playing against scum and Empire players because of their low shields. But 
um, the rebels have now much more uh, cause to be concerned about crit effects. However, the B-Wing with four shields is probably still one of the, the heaviest shielded ships in the game. So you don't really have to worry about crits uh, as much as you used to. But it's, it's still 4-4 four, four instead of 3-5. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a little bit more relevant. It's got the linked barrel roll. That's nim nimble uh, gyroscopic stabilizer kind of uh, capabilities. And its dial, again, uh, sees some improvements. It's um, a little less clunky than it used to be. Still has a ton of red on it. And, um, cool. But it gains these very, very low speed talon rolls, which are this kind of incredible little knife fighting maneuver. So the B Wing, very, very uh, capable little starfighter. Um, pretty beefy. I really like that. Can take some punishment and, and really dish it out. All right, I think for the next one, we're going to do a little change of pace and do a ship that you may sure. recognize primarily from the Imperial faction, the TIE Fighter. It is the TIE Fighter. Hey, it's your old friend, Sabine Wren. She's going to show up a few more places, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not today. Yeah, Sabine in her TIE Fighter. So yes, here's just a, it's a normal TIE Fighter dial, just like the, uh, the Empire enjoys. And uh, this is actually one of the ships that has remained essentially unchanged from first edition. This is still Sabine's truly excellent uh, pre-maneuver booster barrel roll action, and she's in that uh, captured TIE Fighter. So that really cool Sabine paint job is, uh, is returning to second edition. Right. Um, let's do another one from Rebels. I was going to say, yeah, let's just keep rolling on through Rebels. Yeah. Sure, say. why not? Oh, yeah, OK. So here, here we can see uh, Ezra making use of the new force ability. Um, again, he keeps oh, a lot of the characteristics that made him strong in first edition, but he gains that very powerful force point. And uh, his ability now reflects the use of that force point. The also, attack, the attack shuttle dial, I believe, is largely the same. I can't quite right remember. Okay. Uh, I'm sure the uh, the community at large will very quickly compare <laughs> this. Um, it's pretty similar. But the interesting thing is, we no longer need to bake in the docking into the title. Right. Yes, the the, the docking and the ghost and all of mm -hmm. that is much more elegantly well, conveyed in second edition, thanks to our ship, ship ability. Um, you know, then the extra tech space we have here. It's just, it's a, it's a similar mechanic, but it's way simpler to get across. Here's one a lot of people have been wondering about. Yes, here's the sheath of peed. maneuver. Yep, it's mm. the sheath of peed. We figured that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's basically got windows on each end. It's a shuttle, so uh, a backwards maneuver made a lot of sense for the sheath of peed here. And it has uh, a baked in, it has its uh, comm shuttle ability, which is extremely potent um, on, on a ghost or on its own. Sheath of peed. Uh, coordinate is an inc incredibly ghost, powerful. Right? ability, especially in second edition, with linked actions. So I think the sheath appeared will see plenty of play here. Yeah, and interestingly, overall, we've definitely found that, you know, like dedicated support ships are kind of playing more of a second role in, a role in second edition, and they also sort of have this interesting vulnerability dynamic. Yeah, no, support ships are much, much stronger, just thanks to, really thanks to the coordinate action, which was a late, late in first edition uh, mechanic. But uh, really, we baked it into a lot of ships in second edition, so. Um, that is a, a very powerful, powerful ability. I think another one from Rebels we'll do next is. Uh, the... Yeah, let's well, let's see the ghost next. Actually, oh, if, we, sure. if we have oh, it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Uh, I can here. put the card up here because sure. you know we've seen the we've seen the shuttles. Oh, right. We yeah, can now effects. see how they, uh, you know, how they function. Of course, in first edition, when you had any shuttle or when you had the attack shuttle docked, you had a four die attack out of the front and a four oh, die attack out of the back, and that was pretty much. Um, due to tech space limitations and, and in, in an effort to uh, have you know a, a reasonably simple ship to fly, but the nice thing in, is that in second edition, this baked-in ship ability with the tail gun means that you can have a, a rear arc attack that is uh, the same as what shuttle you have equipped. Right. So of course you you put an attack shuttle on there, and you get uh, a three dice attack out of the back. Uh, you put a sheet the peak class shuttle on there, you get a two dice attack and coordinate. And so there's just all kinds of different ways that you can build the ghost. And as you can see here, the ghost uh, dial rather rather similar to the, to the way it was before. Uh, so no big changes there. Um, and then a simple a simple t a title here for the uh, for the ghost. Yeah, and to uh, facilitate the ability to use the ghost title, we also have the phantom title as well. Yes, I'll throw the phantom throw title up there. here. The That's a lot less text than the old version, huh? Oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> so the phantom basically can just redock to the ghost. And uh, thanks to its title, it's able to, uh, able to do that. So these are operating pretty much the way, slightly different from the way they did in first edition, but much more cleanly and simply. Let's see. 
So yeah, I wonder I what happens if you're... Uh, yeah, you let's drop, a, let's drop an Azatuck in here. Here's the Kashyyyk Defender with three Ys, so you know it's potent. <laughs> uh, this was a formidable ship, obviously, in first edition, and it's still a powerhouse, but it's not quite as frustrating to play against, in my opinion, because of the way Reinforce works now. Reinforce uh, no longer um, blocks attacks completely. It just reduces them to a minimum of one. So you're not going to have that frustrating feeling where you know, uh, blaster bolts just ricochet off the hull endlessly because you can't punch damage through. And that makes the swarm a much more effective force against a, right. an Ozotuck. Yeah. It's not just shut down. Exactly, yeah. So I, we're really happy with the way that the reinforced mechanic has worked. And we're also happy that we can give reinforce to any ship we want now, thanks to the new punch board. Mm -hmm. Red um, reinforce is huge, too. Speaking of which, let's grab, let's grab a new, new uh, piece of punch board just to sort of show off Oh, sure. uh, if people are not uh, immediately familiar with that. Is it one of the new... Uh, really anything. Yeah, sure. Let's go with... Uh, oh, here. Just for, <laughs> just for you. Oh, just hey, it's Arvo. Okay, so you can <laughs> see, you know, uh, every ship has that center line, uh, which means that we can uh, toggle on abilities that re revolve around being in the, in the fore or the aft. And uh, so, you know, if desired through upgrade cards or through baked-in ship actions, we can give reinforce out to any ship in the game if we want to. And that's, that's just another example of how much more design space we're getting out of these new token designs. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we're going to keep the game really interesting for many years to come. Um, red Barrel Roll, again, we've been able to give maneuver actions to ships, but make them red to, to indicate that they're not as nimble. Oh, the Hawk. I'm excited about this. <laughs> and I hope that you will be too, Hawk fans. Speaking of support ships. ships. Yes, the Very Hawk. Good. The Hawk's good. <laughs> the hawk's good now, and it's no longer quite the <laughs> quite the cumbersome weirdo ship that it used two. to be. So first thing you can notice, it actually has two attack dice. Doesn't Yay! sound like a lot, but if you're used to one, it certainly <laughs> is. It's and it's got a mobile arc. And it has a mobile arc, which mm -hmm. is actually really helpful because um, that's baked right into the ship. It doesn't have to purchase a turret or yep. anything like that. It also has boost natively. Yes, it has a native red boost. It has linked rotate, so it's got a pretty flexible rotation. It's got a white rotate if it uh, you know, doesn't want to have a stress token. And it has the jam action, which makes it uh, really good at interfering with uh, enemy ships and maneuvers. It makes it a really great support ship. And you'll notice the dial is, is just infinitely better than it was. Um, <laughs> you know, it's still not the most nimble Zero fighter in the, in the world. It's a freighter. It doesn't have a, a choreographed turn. It doesn't have that kind of swiftness, but what it does have is it's got a zero stop, it's got a much better dial with more blue on it and less red, and it's just a, it's just a much more capable ship than it used to be. And actually, if you want to dig out the Moldy Crow, sure, sure, I do want to show that off as well, because you can actually build a Super Hawk Ooh. if you are really so inclined. And I actually think this is one of the most fun titles in the game. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most transformative. It Especially really if you were a Dark Forces fan, if you were a, uh, a Kyle Katarn, Jan Orr's fan. This is their signature vessel, of course. And look at that. That's a hawk with a primary three dice attack. Woo! Oh, wow. And of course, it retains its mobile arc. So that has, you know, it has the wingtip guns, it's got oh, the mobile turret. It's like a tiny little shadow caster. Yep, yeah. exactly. Got, like, and it's got the old Moldy Crow title, which allows it to stack a pile of focus tokens, but it's not infinite anymore. Right. Which is a key thing to note, I think, in second edition. We've, we've tried to limit the amount of, or, or that's, eliminate that's entirely the big, amount of, like, you can good. have infinite stress, you can have infinite focus tokens, because that really discourages engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can only battery up to two, there's no point in running around for seven rounds before you know getting into the fight. So we've tried to keep an eye on that wherever possible. But this is a really fun little ship to fly, yeah, I've got to say. So. And, uh, Do you want to go from uh, one turret to another? Oh, okay. Let's yeah, go, let's, let's see what's next. One support ship to another. Yeah, sure. support ships. So, okay, and that's the other thing. Uh, support ships are really potent. Uh, the U-Wing coordinate ability is very, very strong. And it's also a strong uh, attack ship in this game. It's better than it used to be thanks to a new pivot wing title. A slightly improved dial with much more blue on it means that it can do that zero speed maneuver. You want to look at a the lot. pivot wing too? Yeah, let's check out and the pivot wing. And a medium base. Oh, and yeah. a medium base. Actually, that's a huge improvement. Yeah. It shortens its coordinate range a little, but it makes it so much more flexible. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the new U-Wing. And here is the uh, pivot wing title. Of course, open. No, no no real excitement there, but it keeps its high agility base stat for a, for a shuttle that's quite good. And then when you close the pivot wings, you lose an agility, but you gain the incredibly powerful ability 
to perform a zero maneuver and flip your ship 90 or 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. You can kind of park this thing, hover in place, and provide support fire to your teammates, and it's really effective. I really enjoy flying yeah, all really these support ships. Yeah, get the 90 on there, too. Because it's yes. just sort of like, you don't know where they're going to be. You know they're going to be there, but you don't know where they're going to be facing. And yeah, it's a really yeah. different play style. We can just do so much more with all the tools available to yeah. us in this new format. Yep, like the little angle of corner guide that comes in there yep. allows you to do this maneuver pretty handily. Um, let's see, where do we want to go next? Do you want to go to a turret? Sure, the K-Wing. Another, another, another medium ship. Another medium ship, yep. This is one of the small ships <clears throat> that adjust the screen if it's leveled up a little bit in the new edition because the, the oh, plastic, right, got of bigger. course, is yes. Quite, yes. quite large. Uh, the dial's still nothing to write home about, but of course the slam <laughs> maneuver makes all the difference. There we go. Um, it's better. got white reload, which is very Sorry significant that. because um, almost all ordnance and many bombs and devices can be reloaded in second edition, mm -hmm. which means that the, slam, the natural playstyle of the K-Wing to sort of slam out of danger, uh, reposition, reconfigure, uh, remains a very viable tactic and it can take these opportunities to sort of recharge its munitions and get back in the fight. And so that, that really works out well for the K-Wing. As you can see, the shields have been lowered a little bit. And it has this primary turret situation, which this is a double arc primary turret. This is, this is what we've used to represent ships that have uh, you know, more than one turret. It's got a, a ball gunner on the, the bottom of the cockpit, and it's got you know, a turret gunner on the top. So if we want to actually dig out that double arc, yeah. sure. we can show people what that looks like. That uh, basically, nothing has 360 degree coverage anymore, but the ships that do have a lot of turrets, and, and we wanted to represent that, we've given it basically yeah, you can compare uh, 180 two. degree mobile coverage. So uh, this is on the medium base. This is that double arc. So I'm as sure you can see, Falcon, pretty already. easy to uh, a, yeah. operate. That just fits right it's over down the punch right. board on your medium base like that and points to the two co uh, quadrants of coverage that you can use that uh, use that uh, primary attack on. Sure. Uh, do you want to keep that train going? Sure. All right. Here's another one you might recognize, but its stats have been adjusted. And one thing you'll see, probably notice across the board, certainly uh, as we continue, is that uh, in a lot of cases, shields have come down and hulls come off. Um, yes. There are a number of ships where there have been slight adjustments to sort of usually like a one-for-one one trade because, you know, it, it makes critical, uh, critical damage more effective and interesting, and it sort of creates this, you know, trade-off dynamic. Mm -hmm. So, yes, here we have the Outer Rim Snuggler, the <laughs> Snuggler. Uh, prototype uh, for the modified YT-1300 Millennium Falcon-style ship that uh, everyone's quite familiar too. with. So the biggest differences to the new Falcon, of course, it has a built-in red large ship boost. And one of the big changes about second edition is large ships having boost is an incredible rarity. Mm -hmm. um, that's such an in in incredibly powerful ability, and pretty much every large ship in first edition uh, reached right for that engine upgrade, mm -hmm. uh, almost inevitably. So uh, engine upgrade still exists, but it's much more controllable. All it does in second edition is turn your exactly red boost white. So you already have to have boosting capability. You can't... Uh, Go from nothing to... Yeah, you yeah. can't level a, a, a slow shuttle-type ship into a, a speed demon. But you can improve That's the already cool. decent capabilities of something like the Outer Rim Smuggler. And as you can see, also, the dial has changed. The, uh, the ship no longer can pull off those hairpin one turns, which we you know, uh, compensated for with more blue, with built-in Segnor's loops, and uh, a gain of so the, uh, the three-speed uh, maneuver upgrade, here. So like it's, it's still quite a capable ship, but it's no longer it capable boost. of those incredibly tight turns, which I think is more reflective of its ability. And we can take a look at the title here, too. Yeah, we so should look at the Falcon. Right. Let's look at the Falcon. But on, on a related note there, uh, playing off of the different actions that the cards can give you, this card gives you a new action that wasn't on your bar originally. Yes. And the effect actually works off of it. Yep, exactly. So when defending, if you are evading, which means if you have an evade token, you may reroll one defense die. So that's quite good. It gives you this choice point. Do you spend the evade? Do you reroll? Uh, do you reroll and then say, oh, it I still doesn't work. I'm going to spend the evade. It depends on how many shots you think you're going to take that round. And it just gives you yet another decision point to make. It's also, uh, I remember when we were coming up with that, we talked about the theme and how 
it's the Falcon, you got to decide whether you want to gamble or not. Right. Yeah. That's always a, a classic, a classic <laughs> move. All right. Do you want to go with the last big turret? Yeah, that's the, we did the YT thirteen hundred. Let's do the YT twenty four hundred. Why not? Mm, this one retains its ludicrous dial, remains <laughs> uh, does not gain Segnor's loops, but it remains one of the most potent, most Four maneuverable ships in the game. Uh, and as you can see, it has a pretty wicked attack profile here. Um, wow. It does no. It no longer has the sort of ability to it equip these upgrade to card cannons. We've baked that into the ship ability here. But it still does have a representation of that the sensor, most used one. yeah, sensor blind spot. So yeah. um, it's it's made some gains and it's uh, it t it taken some hits, but it remains an incredibly effective, uh, very very powerful ship. Yeah. So instead of having no attack at range one, it's, it's one, two dice. Mm -hmm. But That's with the only like eighty so totally percent ship, coverage, yeah. eighty degrees, one hundred percent degrees coverage, uh, you aren't actually getting. Um, you can still miss shots. And this is a great example of how ship ability can really change the way a ship plays mm -hmm. and help us create that new identity for that ship with just a little bit of an addition that's on the card already. Mm -hmm. And of course, the barrel roll is now red, which is appropriate for a large ship. Right, this one also has a red barrel roll. Yes, the Z95, largely unchanged, but slightly improved. Ever so slightly. A red barrel roll. Doesn't sound like much, but when you're used to a totally uh, unrepositional Z95, it actually comes into play pretty often. So, pretty just like TIE fighters. nothing too exciting, but it's a great little filler ship, and it has uh, missile capability, which makes it an interesting choice in a lot of different squads. Mm -hmm. I think it gained a three-speed blue too, so it's got mm -hmm. a little bit more green than it used, to, or a little bit more blue than it used to. All right. Hey, look at that. <laughs> it's Rogue Squadron. Boop. We'll wait until oh, you see here we this. Go. E -wing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that dial. Whoa. Holy guacamole. It's, it's got a pretty decent bar, too. Yeah, it's, uh, it's vastly improved from first edition. Um, it has a really interesting inbuilt ability, which lets you get those locks on the approach. Um, it has really powerful linked actions. Um, reposition target lock is a really strong ability. Uh, it's got five actions to choose from, more hull. Um, it, is, it is much more of the powerhouse ship that it uh, ought to be. We wanted, yeah, we wanted it to be a rival to the TIE Defender and really feel yes. like sort of those two ships were the premier but pricey choices. Yeah, yeah, the sort of creme de la creme. And so you can see it has much more capability than it ever did in first edition. And you get uh, the excitement of a very high uh, initiative generic pilot. We're also going to show you Corrin Horn. Yes, <gasps> Corrin Horn remains in the game, present and accounted for. <laughs> but his ability has been, has been toned down a little. Yes. It really requires some precision flying at this point. We're making use of that bullseye arc. Yeah. But yes, so in the combat phase, he gets, uh -huh. his, uh, he gets his second attack. Yep. Yeah, so at initiative zero, which again is a, just a better and clearer timing window, he gets yep. to perform a bonus attack. Now here's something that's uh, key to note. I mean, not super relevant for Corin, but uh, one of the questions that I've been seeing around lately is like, what's the story with extra attacks? How many of those do oh, you sure, get? Oh, sure, sure. Um, cards like cluster missiles, whatever. Uh, ships are limited to one bonus attack per round. So you're never going to have a ship that's going to be able to, to attack more than twice, uh, however many extra attack capabilities it, it bolts on. So that helps keep things under control. Uh, and Corrin, of course, still loses his shot the following round. Um, so still a powerhouse ship, still a really interesting ship to play, but it now requires a little bit more pinpoint flying to make full use of it seems him. fair. Right. I'm sure our most competitive players will not struggle too much to accomplish this. No, getting I, bull, I like getting, it. I like the challenge. Yeah. Getting bullseye you know? is uh, with an E-wing also is uh, you know especially a high initiative E-wing mm -hmm. is definitely something you can you can do. You've got the you've got the maneuverability you need. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, here's the Arc 170, the uh, the Rebel salvage operation pulled some of these old venerable Clone Wars ships into their arsenal. Um, uh, you can see here the the real Garvin. really handy thing about having the the new graphic design that we have is we can represent the front and rear arcs. Right. If you want to pull a, a token out for yeah, me, uh, we can represent that right on the ship card without having to do anything awkward with titles. It's very clear: three dice at the front, two dice out of the rear. Um, so that's easy peasy. Uh, Garvin Check out this gets to fly an arc in second edition. Uh, oh, let me get you Garvin. Here's Garvin. Sure. Yeah, and so here's again a, a nice example of the medium base. It's got those rear arcs built in. Uh, the dial is uh, slightly improved again. The sort of the consistent rebel 
you know, uh, six blue at bank maneuver. That's sort of a, a common characteristic of the Incom ships that sort of share, share that uh, capability. And I believe this is another beneficiary of uh, red barrel roll? Yep, it's mm -hmm. got that built-in red barrel roll. Vectored, vectored thrusters, of course, in first edition was a very popular choice <laughs> on the arc. And as you might have suspected from uh, engine upgrade, there is a way here to make that barrel roll white, appropriately enough here, expert handling on the uh, ARC-170. So if you're a good enough pilot, you can push your ship's capabilities a little bit further than you otherwise would be able to. ARC's a really fun ship. It's a, it's a bruiser. Uh, some of your favorite ARC pilots have certainly returned, uh, but there's also some new pilots uh, as well. Some things have shifted around a little bit. I think uh, are much requested. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't want to see Dash? <laughs> so he's, he's really simple. Ooh, when you move. You ignore obstacles. So that the moving in second edition, that that's that's maneuvers. So it's your barrel rolls, that's your uh, your dial, um, and that's basically old dash. Except he's no longer a may. So he just he don't have to try to remember or declare, hey, I'm going to ignore obstacles while I'm moving right now. Uh, he just does. So he's simpler, he's cleaner, but it's the same dash that you know and love or hate if you've been on the table up against him. So. Alrighty, some we'll look at some requests. some requests. We've got Nora Wexley. Nora Wexley is brutal. Um, there are very, very, very few abilities in the game that allow you to add results. So just seems like they're not going to show us everything. But Nora is one of them. Us. If she mixes it up at range one, if she can put an enemy up in her grill, she gets to add an evade result, and that helps the arcs survivability tremendously. And th this ability is one where, again, theme really comes in, where this is based directly on how every time she gets into a ship in the book, she immediately flies it directly into the enemy. <laughs> yep. And then it usually explodes, and she bails out at the last minute. <laughs> so Nora, Nora represented well. Uh, and then, of course, we have Hera. Hera, I think people were curious about her initiative. It's uh, relatively higher in this edition, which makes her uh, ability um, a little bit more usable. And the ghost, of course, gaining reinforce is, is really powerful. Um, and Hera can utilize her pilot ability to leverage those reinforce tokens a lot better. You know, if she dials in a maneuver and realizes, oh shoot, most of the squad's not going to be in the section that I want to reinforce this round and, and attack from, she can, uh, she can re-plot her, um, her dial accordingly. So that's very very strong as a repositional ability. Oh, Han. Unsurprisingly, the greatest pilot in the galaxy has been requested a few times. <laughs> there he is, still shooting first. And uh, as you can see, he's making use of uh, the, sort of the new obstacle rules. So as long as he can sort of hug asteroids, he has a really strong ability. Oh, he is, can uh, reroll nice all of his dice. Now, the nice thing about this is it's very similar to his first edition um, ability, but it, it like everything we're trying to do, we're trying to key it off of positioning. Mm -hmm. We're trying to key it off of actually the way that you fly your ship. Yeah, but if he can find himself from... within range zero to one of an obstacle, uh, he is able to reroll on the offense and on the defense. So it can help keep that Falcon alive much more often, especially if you can manage to get those shots obstructed. If you're rolling two defense dice, or if you're if you're playing the range game, uh, and and you manage to hug those obstacles, uh, Han can be very very powerful. So he's a lot of fun, remains very strong. And here is a Gunner version of Han. A Gunner, of course, a new icon entirely. And a uh, separate upgrade slot from Crew. Some people have been wondering about that. Gunner yes. and Crew are separate upgrade slots. They are, yeah. So the Falcon, off the top of my head, uh, has two Crew slots and uh, one Gunner slot. So you, know, you can have uh, Luke or Han represented in that Gunner slot, various other crew members represented in the Crew slot. And uh, Han, of course, shooting first. That's kind of his bit. Um, he not only gets to shoot first, but he gets a uh, turret arc attack. Uh, and it says, um, you, uh, at initiative seven, you may perform a turret arc attack. You cannot attack from that turret arc again this round. Now, that doesn't mean you can't attack with your turret again this round. What that means is you have these two different pointers so if Han, at initiative seven, attacks from the left side of his ship, during the engagement phase at his normal initiative, he can attack from the right side of the ship. So he can oh, still do those double taps, but they're, they're not going to be at the same target because it's from a different arc. Yeah, so that's a fun little mechanic. It's kind of fun to try to plan those, those sort of abilities out, where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, if I'm positioned right here, I can, I can attack twice. 
We've had a request for Jan Ors. Jan Ors remains very Jan. similar to her first edition build. She's on a much better chassis, and uh, all these Hawk support abilities are now arc based. Um, so it says, while a friendly ship in your firing arc performs a primary attack, if you're not stressed, you may gain a stress token. If you do that, ship may roll one additional attack die. So very similar to her first edition uh, ability, but it requires a little more pre-planning. And in her role as an intelligence operative, she's you know giving targeting information yep. and all that, and making sure that people know you know like where to focus their fire. And but she to... has to have her weapons and sensor arrays locked in on that uh, yeah. on that ally as well. So you have to plan a little bit more with that mobile arc. Um, but again, very, very few abilities in second edition actually add attack dice. Oh, yeah. So this is a hugely strong support ship and remains a ton of fun to fly. That's right. reasonable to keep her. Oh, Miranda. Well, Miranda took a hit. I'm, we're not going to beat around the bush there. But she needed, <laughs> she needed to come down in power a little. Uh, well, a lot, really. <laughs> so she has the, the ghost of her old ability, uh, built-in double arc here. She can still add dice and spend her shields she can only to become recover more shields powerful and regain her shields. But shields. because it's keyed into primary attacks, and because she can only recover a shield if she is unshielded, she is much less of a okay. regen headache to deal with for enemy squads. Still a valuable player in your list, but no longer the absolute monster that she was in first edition. And we wanted to be really careful with her because we wanted her to have the ability to bounce back, but we mm -hmm. didn't want her to have that huge bounce back. And that's, I think, another case where the shield and hull values may have changed. Uh, did the K-Wing go down? Maybe a I little. I can't remember. Is this be four and five? They are. Man, uh, first edition is Not kind of being yet. deleted in, from my brain but in either case, on a regular the, basis. The, the fact that she can only do it while unshielded is significant. Because yes, it means that it she can't do that huge bounce back. So yep. you're probably going to be able to chip some damage through, but she will be able to keep one of those shields up a lot of the time. Yeah. So you've got this trade-off of like, okay, I can start to whittle her down, but and I am going to make progress, mm -hmm. but you know she is going to keep Kit that little bar protecting her as well. So. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm a lot happier with the place that regen is in, in the game. It's it's vastly limited. Yeah. And so it really, again, it encourages those engagements to actually result in ship annihilation, which is what you want in the Starfighter oh, yes. that game. Yeah, one thing I'm pointed about the insert here is it has all of the bombs. Oh, oh yeah, why don't we put that on the camera? Sure. Your bombs, bombs are back. Let's take a look Most at of bombs. them are very similar. Some of them are wildly different. Uh, my favorite bomb is the seismic charge. You can kind of see that there. We've already talked about seismic. We've got a proximity mine and a seismic charge. I'll leave that up for a minute so you can absorb that. The seismic proximity charge mine finally uh, lets you attack my most hated enemy directly. Asteroids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Max, I, I love that you have now designed both the seismic torpedo and the seismic charge because you hate flying into rocks so much. <laughs> They're a real enemy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really fun. It's a really great mechanic, and, and it's a ton of fun. Plays into that positional game a lot more. I'm going to fold this over so you can take a look at proton bombs and loose cargo. Again, proton bombs, very similar to the way they used to be, uh, but now they do a damage rather than go right underneath shields. So they're, it's more important to like whittle those shields No, down. they haven't done imps They're or scum tactical, yet. We're still on rebels. Um, in, in that respect. Um, so, but still a very strong bomb. And a lot of people are probably curious, does that bomblet generator remain in the game? Well, yes, it does. Uh, but again, we're trying to combat that whole infinite stuff syndrome. <laughs> so uh, here's what the bomblet does. Um, Frank, you want to dig me out the bomblet generator upgrade oh, card? Oh, the card itself? Sure. Yeah, just to sort of show people it what's going on shields. there. It eats your shields As now. As the original yep. theme of the bomblet generator, it runs off the shield generator. Oh, no. And so it eats your shields. Oh, no. Might have been lost to the box. Oh, there it is. Yeah, no, nope. there we are. Yes, yes, no, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so you've hopefully absorbed what the bombet does. Um, yeah, does here's the generator now. itself. Very few ships can equip this, but it's no longer uh, Skurg specific. Any ship with a double bomb slot can rock the bomblet generator. Was it Skurg? That's true before. It was, that's no, true. It was, that's true. It was, it was uh, anyone. Anyway. Uh, however, it is, uh, it is much more keyed off of your shields now. You can uh, burn oh, shields to I get bombs. I like that. But that's a real cost benefit. 
you know, if you're in a position cool. that you want to keep dropping bomblets, it's going to cost you. And of course, it's finite, because eventually you're going to run out of shields. It's yeah. just inevitable. It's quite interesting on a pilot like Miranda. Mm -hmm. But Very much she's so. going to be spending a lot of time, you know, like uh, trading her shots for shields and then trading those shields for bombs. It's a pretty complicated economy there. <laughs> yeah, definitely not, not, uh, not the kind of um, infinite bomb dropping that we uh, remember from first edition. Boom! Right. Rebels on All box. Right. The imps. Empire. Yes, the Galactic, Galactic Empire. Empire. So, this part's going to be a little familiar. Oh, look! Punch board again! <laughs> more cards, more cards, cards. The other insert. Mm -hmm. These we're going to keep under wraps a little bit. There'll be some marketing articles sure. in the near future that go into the uh, additional TIE pilots that, uh, the brand new that you'll be getting in second edition. Got a uh, yeah. insert sheet, of course. Still medium bases, mm -hmm. and still four of them. Still four of them. Lots of uh, peg or uh, plastic di uh, dial connector. Connectors, dial connectors. Dials. Yes. Dial connectors. Those are the words. Do hickeys. Do hickey shababs. Right. The poor man's maraca. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting choice for you, <laughs> if you, if you so desire. All so right. do we? Do you want to? Uh, just jump into ships. Favorite and, favorite yeah. stuff. Sure. Sure. Let's see. I, I have a, a clear favorite <laughs> from this wave. <laughs> uh, it's a Thai bomber pilot, and he has one of the silliest and I think uh, most entertaining. If I can, I can toot my own horn for a minute. Uh, <laughs> oh God! The, the design game. on this was so great too. I just, I just like. We him. were trying to think of an ability for this guy, and Alex is like, "What if?" <laughs> and nice. then we said, "Print it." It was perfect. Yeah. Yep. I mean, this right. Is, yeah, this is this is a Fell's Wrath type arms. ability that I think is actually kind of effective. And even if it isn't super effective, it oh. is super fun. All right, let's look at Here's the Imperials. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna let that sit there. Got a little more literal, <laughs> right? Yep. I assume you earned that call sign through some uh, uh, like simulation that. experience. One, one would hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything but, else? Uh, I mean, maybe just, maybe just ejects every time. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> How do you learn that trick? <laughs> <laughs> well. So yeah, that's definitely. Oh, and then we can also highlight the drop really cool or launch. bomber device. ability. You know, the Thai bomber expressly designed to drop bombs. This is another example of where the ex or the Empire can really excel in those sort of specific roles. Right. One of our big designs with that faction was like, you know, the Empire has these highly specific ships. It designs an entire chassis to do one thing: drop bombs and, and that kind of. So you, they, they are more capable of that one thing, but they lose their all-around, you know, well-rounded kind of Swiss Army knife capabilities. So Nimble Bomber, it's just a great little buff to bomb dropping. Um, it's really good with seismic charges, really good with proton bombs. It's a very helpful, helpful ability to have. All right, I think I'm going to go to my favorite card next, which uh, is, a, is a character from... Oh, yeah. Uh, from Lost Stars. Yes, mm. uh, Ace Pilot and eventual leader. Cyanna uh, Very strong supportability. Yeah, you can see yeah. her awesome art uh, mm -hmm. back again. Oh, you have to have from, coordinate uh, to equip her. Yeah, that was, really, that was really cool, getting to kind of establish the, the visual identity of her based on the, just the description. Oh, that's, the art that's bizarre. Yeah, but that's like, that wild. ability that. is crazy. It's really good, but again, it requires that support ship. Um, it's you know specific to certain things, but it's very, very fun, particularly on a ship like an Interceptor. Um, or you know any sort of uh, oh, ship that can, can really benefit from those um, high pilot skill kind of repositioning tricks. So. Yeah, it also really plays up the ability of this. Is, feels like a very empire ability yes. where it's like uh, you know when you're doing these things, uh, you have to stay in formation in order for me to assist you in that mm -hmm. kind of way. So yeah, she's a lot of fun, and she directly supports Come other starfighter aces, which is cool. Right. So in her capacity as commander, she's she's great at making use of aces. Speaking of commanders who's not so good at making use of their subordinates. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vader, of course, uh, very driven, mm. very focused. Let's see Vader. He doesn't really mind True. if his Star Destroyers get smashed up by asteroids. He's going to get things done. He gives done. you a force. Uh, so and he's a bit of a devil's choice now. He's yeah. He is, yeah. He, uh, you know, we wanted to keep that flavor of you know, lowering your defense to e increase your offense, which is a very Vader-feeling thing. But we didn't really love the self-damage. Uh, that felt much more like a scum ability. Right. Um, but we did like that sort of trade defense for offense ability. So um, if you lower your guard around Vader, he will punish you for it. 
But the defender can um, the defender can certainly counteract that by taking focus actions, um, that kind of thing. And if he does, you know, use his ability, he spends a force point, which means he's not going to have that force point available for defense. So it's very much the the aggressive, really fun place. Also, it's place twofold. That, uh, Pater's rewards, twofold. He's got the force um, point, you know, and it gives you a new way to stuff spend like the force point. Blocking the enemy ship, denying them a green token, and then hitting them with Vader. It's again more positional play. I really like his design as well. He's, he's a ton of fun. Plays up his theme. He's terrifying. He is. Absolutely. You got to use that amazing art piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, that's hanging over my desk. I love that piece. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to just preempt the request? Oh, sure. Yeah. We Palpatine. know you ask for it. Look at that. Look at that. Pal so Palpatine is both uh, in some ways stronger and in some ways weaker than his kind of final post errata first edition version. Uh, we went back to the core Ooh. concept of his design, which is infinite range, immense power. But it works with the force mechanic now, and it works much better than, uh, you know, I think much, much cleaner. You know, he's, he's not fixing blanks. Um, you still have to roll, you still have to roll eyeballs. So it's, it's again, that hyper defensiveness, that, you know, that fortress kind of stuff. Uh, still a very powerful ability. Still super strong that he can do that uh, once around to any you know eyeball that shows up, but much more balanced, much more controllable, and of course with the app and points costing, we're really confident that he can find a really nice points level um, where that ability is going to be valuable without being totally oppressive. So I really like the new Emperor. He's still a double crew because he's going to bring his whole retinue along. Uh -huh. uh, does not travel without an entourage, <laughs> uh, which makes his you know he's limited to certain support ships like the Lambda and, and the Decimator. Well, not that the decimator is a support ship, but um, well, it is among other things. It is. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's sort of a war, <laughs> a war support ship. It's a flying conference room. Yes, it is. <laughs> the Tie Fighter, unchanged. We've already seen the Tie Fighter. It's a Tie Fighter. It's Tie Fighter. <laughs> it does whatever a Tie Fighter does. We've uh, already even seen it today. Yep. And so this is sort of the baseline, the baseline uh, level of quality that we tried to balance the whole game around. Um, we tried to make sure that the Tie Fighter is going to have a price level and a power level that is going to allow it to be an effective combat force um, against a lot of uh, enemy lists. And, and one of the big ways we've done that is we've made sure that defense doesn't go too crazy. So that two attack dice is not just squandered on these uncrackable targets. So despite the TIE Fighter not having changed at all, a lot of the uh, ships that were punching way too high have been lowered down Defense has been reduced in general, and it's just a lot easier to get uh, to get shots off and to achieve things with the Tie Fighter now. So I'm sure. I'm pretty confident the Tie Fighter Swarm will kind of return to glory yeah. uh, when Second Edition comes out. So we've got a lot of directions to go from here, as it's sort of the gener generic chassis, if you will, for the Empire. Yeah. Uh, what are you What are you feeling? Well, let's let's uh, let's start with um, you know some of the canonical stuff first. Sure. Let's do let's do, do the the, uh, the film ships. Yeah, so we've seen uh, we've seen the tie advanced. You've seen Vader, um, uh, if you've watched the streams and stuff. But uh, here's the dial. Here's the tie advanced. Here's a simple Storm Squadron Ace, generic. It's just a solid chassis. You know, it's uh, it's got um, limitations on its firepower because it has to key into the target lock. But once it has a ship locked down, it can really follow up and do a lot of devastating things. With the lower shield levels in the game, particularly that that change a hit to a crit ability is actually really strong. It's stronger than it used to be because you're getting crits more through, through their shields much more often. So uh, it's got a linked focus barrel roll, which is handy, and it's got a much improved dial. I mean, it doesn't look like much necessarily, but just having that one straight, having those banks be green, having the three talon roll, it no longer feels like you're, you know, driving this sluggish, unmaneuverable mm -hmm. ship. It's still, it's not as as capable of turning as a Tie Fighter, but it's got a much forward. more flexible dial, comparable to the X-wing in, in a number of ways. Right, do you want to turn this to the other Tie Advanced? Sure. Yeah. So these are fun. There's uh, two generics in the Tie Advanced V1, and you can kind of see the evolution of these prototypes here. Uh, this you, also highlights oh, one of the two. Empire's cool standout features right now. That's right. You've got a generic with a force point. So, you know, there, wow. there are, as we know, many Inquisitors performing uh, their duties throughout the galaxy, and uh, they have those, uh, those force abilities, and they've, they've trained how to use them. So um, you can have a generic pilot with a force point, which is very so strong. 
Uh, Why would you want to take Baron of, of the Empire? Because you can target lock fire the missile, cheaper. use your force to modify that focus result if it shows up. Or take or, uh, instinctive aim and right. not target lock to fire yep. the missile at all. Yep, or do a red red maneuver and still have some defense on. Mm. So force points, as we know, very strong. Um, Talon rolls have shown up here. Uh, sol same solid dial that it used to be. Um, just, a, just a relatively inexpensive but strong ship. And if you don't want to spend the large amount of points on this force point, but you still want uh, a TIE advanced prototype in your list, you can uh, pay a substantial, you know, have a substantial discount for a Baron of the Empire. Uh, there, there, the other difference, of course, that you can't see on the cards is that the Inquisitor has the force power slot, whereas the Baron has the talent slot. So depending on how you've built your list, depending on what upgrade cards you want to bring, you may choose one over the other. Yeah, they did say the barrel. Bombers works. we've looked at a little bit. Here's the base bomber chassis. Um, it's got that red reload, which does, does give it a chance to uh, get that, those, uh, those missiles back into the uh, fight, those torpedoes back into the fight, or those bombs back into the fight if it uh, has a chance to disengage. Of course, it remains quite uh, fragile, but um, the dial is a little bit better, and the nimble bomber ability has been added, and the points cost of this ship is lower than it was in first edition as well. So it's just a very good, uh, very good uh, little, little chassis. Not too expensive, but pretty capable. Oh, the Interceptor. Oh, here we and go. Another exciting uh, initiative for oh, we'll Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so the Interceptor, again, really fantastic dials, gain Segnor's loops. And the Interceptor has one of the closest things to the super powerhouse of first edition, Push the Limit. Mm -hmm. It can't focus evade, but the beautiful thing about its built-in ship ability is that it can boost your barrel roll, it can barrel roll boost, it can focus boost, it can evade barrel roll, it can do a lot of combinations, but it, again, focuses on that maneuvering. Because mm -hmm. that's what the Interceptor was designed to do. It's supposed to be this very nimble, anti-starfighter kind of thing. So arc dodging, very, very, very much still a thing for the Interceptor. And a um, pilot same, still for generic, too. very fragile chassis, but uh, one of the strongest built-in ship abilities in the game. And nothing else even comes close in terms of repositional power. Everyone told us how much they liked putting auto thrusters on there, so we thought we'd just put the <laughs> auto thrusters right on for them. Right? They do something a little different now. Yeah. And actually, on the subject, one of the interesting things about it is that it has to rely more on arc dodging now. It so does. Yeah. Really yep. Tough stack. Unless yep. you're flying very well and flying someone Yes, else. that's true. Well, and the other thing is that, you know, by turning all turrets into mobile arcs, it can actually avoid fire from turreted ships, especially if it has high initiative. So that actually becomes a much more positional game in second edition, which we're really happy about. And here's the Baron himself. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Soon tier fell. The ace of legend. <laughs> Um, still one of the more defensive interceptors. Um, having that initiative six and that repositional power means he's one of the squirreliest fighters in the game. Um, but he has to keep those bullseye arcs locked on target. Uh, he is much less capable of just turning and running. Um, his primary mode of defense is to stay out of arc, if at all possible. So still a very powerful card, but again, much more reliant on pinpoint you know, positional stuff. Is this uh, Frank's favorite ship? I mean, it certainly, it certainly is as far as the uh, pilot ability using the uh, ship ability uh, being able to be right on the card there. Yeah, um, and you no longer can, you know, one of the, one of the to, you know, uh, as you well know, having designed the ship, one of the, the tricky things about it was in first edition, you couldn't really mandate the equipment of right. adaptive ailerons. So you had to kind of design the ship what if they don't take it? What if they do take it? Well, thanks to ship abilities, they just have it. It's just the, the nature of that ship is to go really fast mm -hmm. and use those ailerons. So um, that means we can change the dial to kind of reflect that, uh, knowing that it's going to be mandatory rather than optional. Right. Which I think is a, is a big thing. And, oh, also uh, we can do stuff like give it you know, what it should have had, which is, is bombs. Yeah, it has the device uh, slot. It has the bomb slot or device slot in uh, second edition, which means that um, this really interesting highly positional, maneuverable ship can really make use of its ailerons to drop devices. Mm -hmm. So that's another, um, you know, very particular uh, imperial, imperial build. It's kind of an interesting ship because it's got a little bit of 
It's got a little bit of interceptor. It's mm -hmm. got a little bit of bomber. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really cool ship, if you ask me. And it flies really well with the Reaper, which we yes. are not going to be showing off today because it isn't in the kit it, because it, it's a new ship. That's, that's right. But look but forward to uh, some be fun marketing together. articles. Absolutely. They, they do fly well together. Here's another ship that many people have probably been curious about. Will you pull the Lambda punch for me as well? Because that's, yeah, that's significant. Now, we did not change the dial. It remains the worst dial in the game by a <laughs> substantial margin. And a lot of people perhaps are wondering why. You know, why did we stick well, with this truly atrocious name. dial? And for my part, I actually respected that James Niffen was willing to give it such a terrible dial, because it lets you give it really powerhouse stats and abilities, and it really does feel like this is not necessarily a combat ship. You know, this is to transport important passengers. This is, you know, if it gets into a fight, it has defensive capabilities, but this is not an attack craft. You're not sending this on, on missions. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really, really strong, and one of the big things that compensates for this lack of a dial, one, it has white coordinate, hugely powerful. Two, reinforce to keep it alive longer, keep those passengers protected. Uh, jam capabilities to interfere with enemy attacks, and it has a front gun, and it has a chase armament. So it's much more capable of swinging into the fight early, getting a couple good shots off, but then remaining a valuable support ship and having a rear, uh, you know, a rear arc. It's, you know, it, we didn't change the dial, but we changed so much else about this ship that it's so much more capable and, and interesting to fly. And I'm a huge defender of Lambdas in first edition because they're, <laughs> they're, uh, they're really fun. But you no longer need to necessarily put the Emperor on one for it to be a valuable right. ship in its own right. In fact, you might not even want to choose the Emperor. If you're doing uh, an ace build, you might want to take Scenery instead. Scenery and really or try to get that Tarkin. Oh, yeah. you know, there's plenty of new Imperial crew that can really leverage mm -hmm. this kind of support ship like this. So I'm really excited about the Lambda. One of my favorite ships, and just definitely better than ever. Sure. Here's Actually, a, yeah, let's show off another cool Yeah, all right, here's Ad Admiral Sloan, another great new kin yeah. character for the Imperials. So this is after another friendly ship yeah. at range 0 to 3 defends. If it is destroyed, the attacker gains two stress tokens. Uh, however, while a friendly ship at range 0 to 3 performs an attack against a stress ship, it may reroll one attack die. So basically, this is a highly defensive ability. If you start dropping... TIE Fighters against Admiral Sloan, you're going to pay the price in stress, and the rest of your list is going to get a benefit from it. So mm -hmm. this is another really kind of um, very complicated synergistic ability, and I'm really excited to see what kind of lists players will build around that mm -hmm. uh, and, and how they're going to leverage that kind of support ability. So another cool passenger for either the Reaper or the, uh, the Lambda. I think we're just doing one more of those new oh, yeah. crew members for the Empire. Minister Tua. So this is very similar to uh, the old Yasan Izard card, um, but we were able to grab you know, a more canonical character. Uh, at the start of the engagement phase, if you're damaged, you may perform a red reinforce action. So you know, she can bring, again, bring reinforce to ships that don't necessarily have reinforce because um, she's a valuable you know, diplomatic personage. She's a, she's a... And like in the show, she really doesn't want to die. Yeah, <laughs> understandably so. It doesn't go so well for her. No, so, you know, so. uh, she's, a, she's a really interesting <laughs> defensive addition. Um, so you know, when, when the damage starts coming in, she's going she's gonna to bring up that technology and try to protect herself. So we talked about how the E-Wing is this elite ship you know, designed to contend with the TIE Defender. And now we'll show you why. Yeah, the TIE Defender remains an absolute monster. In fact, it's even scarier than ever in some ways. So it's gained a shield. The mm. dial remains very focused on going fast and going straight, and has a built-in full throttle ability. Now, we it's thought very carefully about the balance of the game, because this is one of the strongest pilot abilities in the game. Uh, ship we abilities. Know, ship abilities, yeah, thank you. Uh, we know that from the TIE, what was it, X7? Yeah, title yep. card in, in first edition, yeah. Super, super strong. However, it's a little bit more limited in its current form. One, you have to fully execute the maneuver, which means if you're blocked, you can't get the, the benefit. And you'll notice a lot of abilities say fully execute. <laughs> yes. Nearly all of them. <laughs> yes, because that's the thing. Like, you, you, can't, you can't gain this defensive benefit if you weren't able to actually go your three-speed oh maneuver. So you can't, you can't dial in a maneuver, bump immediately, and gain that Yeah, gain if that you're worried benefit. about colliding with another ship, like, how can you be able to concentrate enough to do your special abilities? Exactly. So that helps, helps so balance that things. Like the other thing that helps balance things is the, the evade token <clears throat> uh, changes a die instead of adding an evade result. Right. So you, you know, if you get 
get hit by a, a four hits, there's even with an evade token, you're not going to be able to block that. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a corner case thing, but it helps re retain it. Now, the, that being said, this is still an incredibly expensive ship because high mm -hmm. offense, really great hulls and shields, and uh, high defense. So it's a monster, but it will be costed appropriately, hopefully. Mm -hmm. All right. Ah, uh, the Punisher. Another candidate for potentially <laughs> most improved. I would say perhaps oh, sure. this is I'm the most improved. Because it had a long ways to go. Let's be, let's mm -hmm. be real. Jump so this has gotten a uh, medium base, um, which makes it a little more cumbersome to fly. But the fact that it has boost, boost into built in boost log. into red target lock means as an ordnance carrier, it's quite powerful. It can boost into range, get those really good angles. Um, it is quite durable, um, and the cost, of course, will be much, much lower. It's got a built-in white reload, which is quite strong. It's got a red barrel roll. Um, you know, this we're hoping, and, and, a, and a much improved dial, including a zero maneuver, uh, which, you know, as a, as a fan of the zero maneuver, we tried to spread that out on, on to logical candidates to give you some, some more ships that can do that stop maneuver. So I think the Punisher, much improved, very interesting. Um, very interesting pilot, and actually, let's let's spoil uh, let's spoil one of the uh, the named people. Let's spoil oh, um, sure. Let's it's spoil uh, Death Rain. Oh, Death we spoiled Death Fire, and then I spoiled Death Rain. Yeah, let's <laughs> do both. Because uh, I really like the way that this ability plays out. It's it's a bonus action ability, but again, it's it's um, really pegged to some very. Oh, did I pass right. it? All right. <laughs> Death uh, Death Rain coming soon. Yes. To, uh, okay. to a live stream uh, near you. There are two oh my God. piles of ship cards. Um, See, you're getting a lot of stuff. You get a lot of ship cards in the Empire. Look at all you're getting for 50 bucks. You're getting yeah, a lot, lot of ship cards. Where did it go? Oh, there he is. There, there we go. Death Rain. Yes. Beautiful. All right, so Death Rain's a lot of fun, I think. Uh, basically, Ooh. after you perform, <clears throat> or after you drop or launch a device, you may perform an action. So he still has that really fun, you know, uh, drop a bomb, barrel roll, do a maneuver, and because the barrel roll, or boost, uh, because the barrel roll is red, but because he drops the bomb in the system phase, you can do that fun thing where you do the red action and then perform a blue maneuver to clear that stress and gain an additional action. But it's limited by the number of bombs that you have, and it's not always wise to drop a device, uh, especially if your friendly ships are nearby. So fun ability uh, makes the Punisher a little bit more nimble. Um, I'm excited. Red line's back as well. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a it's much better army. ship, and pretty good ability. it can find a, a points level that makes it uh, competitive. I'm, I'm quite sure. All right. Oh yeah, are they going to put speaking Thrawn of in here? ships with highly specific roles? Here's the weirdo tie aggressor. Still the uh, only, one of the only ships in. Is it the only ship? I think it's the only ship in the Imperial Arsenal yeah, that can equip the, the turret, turret upgrade. Slot. Yep. Yeah, the turret yep. upgrade slot. They've got some mobile arcs, but that's it for. And, and just in general, there are fewer turreted, uh, with the Hawk being a mm -hmm. primary attack now, there are just fewer ships with the turret upgrade. That is true, and the turret upgrade quite quite different. It's a good chance to show off a... Uh... Yeah, let's show a turret upgrade people may have not seen before. Here's a dorsal turret. It's very similar to the way that it was. Very in complicated mission. ability. Um, yep. I think most players will get it. But, um... <laughs> it's just a two attack dice mobile <laughs> turret, range one to two, and at range one it rolls an additional attack die because turrets in this game now... Pretty simple. Uh, roll extra dice. So, affordable turret, little su you know, little support ship. You can you can take these very very inexpensively and, and use them to chip in damage, or you can take a more expensive turret and uh, and 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 have them cost a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I was going to mention real quick. Again, that's the upgrade card itself gives you the ability to rotate. So as you saw, there was no native ability right. on the tigressor, but the card gives you that effect. And one interesting. Uh, I think to note about the Tigressor as well is it is uh, one of the, if, if not the first example we've seen of a ship that has access to an action only via link. Oh. True. Um, that is true. So uh, it's in this interesting place, and this is a design space that we like being able to explore, mm -hmm. where it can only evade if you've done a barrel roll. It can only yep. sort of dodge if it's physically moving around. Because it's not as dodgy as a TIE fighter, mm -hmm. um, but that's sort of better, but it's sort of worse. You have to be have the space to barrel roll to do it, but you can do both. Yeah. So it's this really great ability for us to expand on the way ships feel and fly mm -hmm. in a big way without having to add anything really complicated. Yeah, exactly. It's just just an extra symbol, and it's very easy to understand. Mm -hmm. So one of the ships here uh, that has actually seen kind of a substantial redesign Ooh. in terms of role is go. the Decimator. 
Uh, it was very similar to the YT-1300 Millennium Falcon Can't ships coordinate. in first edition. And we sort of felt like in second edition, we have a chance to give this more of a unique identity. Made it even tougher. Um, so, too. you know, the dial remains pretty cumbersome, uh, does not have a Coria Grand turn, uh, still a zero agility ship with a huge amount of hull and shields, so still a monster. But the actions that it has gained really set it apart. The fact that it has red coordinate is really interesting. The fact that it has white reinforce is really interesting. The way that you play this ship is much more of a rolling tank. Oh, and it can't take engine upgrades, so it can't right. do that boost arc dodge thing. So it's, you know, it's very much more of a rolling tank kind of uh, play style. You can put you know, the Emperor on there. You can put important crew on there. Um, and it has the double arc and a strong attack. But it's not going to be flying around, boosting all over the place, dodging arcs like the Millennium Falcon might do. So it's a very interesting ship, different play style. And I'll throw in, here's yet another way that we're kind of controlling these upgrades. A tactical officer allows you to change that red coordinate into a white coordinate. So if you want to build the decimator into more of a support role, you can use one of his two crew slots I, to coordinate your other this. ships. Uh, if, you put the Pal if you put Palpatine on there instead, of course, you're going to sacrifice that white coordinate. So everything is, a, is, you know, it's about making choices. How do you want to build this ship? Well, how do you want to play it? Yeah. So that's, that's a, a common theme you'll see, uh, cards that will change red actions into white actions. Yep. I think that's all the Empire ships. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, wait. No, no, no. wait, wait. What? There's one more, There's one more hiding. There's, There's no such hiding. thing. I don't know. No, no, sh no ship that small has a, has a cloaking device. Oh, wait. No. It, it, here it is. It's the fancy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wait, so they didn't do Out a fire spray. So is there no more fire spray? All right. Uh, yeah, the Phantom I'm really happy with. This has been spoiled partially online, but... Um, the saga of this ship is ridiculous. This is one of the first. This was the first wave that I ever worked on, mm -hmm. and you and I kicked Phantom ideas around for months. And I think we went through like what was it, nine different yeah. iterations it's of the cloaking long, device. Yeah, there were so many. Something like that. Yeah. I used to have like a plus minus attack yeah, token. It, there was a ton of stuff. Yeah. And the the cloaking device that we landed on was a lot of fun, but of and course no the balance was a nightmare. Either? Oh yeah. As we saw. Uh, so it went through uh, one of the very first full hard erratas to the game <laughs> that we ever did, and um, we really took that lesson to heart. The cloaking ability that it has is very much the same as it ended up in first edition. Basically, in this new system phase, you can use your cloak token to perform a two-speed barrel roll to the left, a two-speed uh, barrel roll to the right, and, uh, or, or a two-speed you know, boost straight ahead. Um, so that remains unchanged. Gunboats, yeah. What has changed is we didn't really love the interaction of advanced cloaking device and having to rely on high initiative. Mm -hmm. it, effectively, it made the low pilot skill first edition pilots useless. Yeah. Because if you weren't recloaking, if you weren't getting the benefit of that, why take a phantom? Exactly. So basically, the only playable phantoms were Whisper and occasionally Echo. Mm -hmm. and we didn't want to do that again. We wanted the generics to really have a role. And they do, because this new Stygium array means that they are the best cloaking ships in the game. When they decloak, they get an evade token, so that helps their defense. And it also rewards them for dodging arcs and remaining you know, these slippery, invisible ships. If you don't get shot at, you can spend that evade token to recloak, which means that if you can set it up right, every single turn, you're decloaking, firing, recloaking, uh, and that's just really strong. But if you do take fire, you have to have that difficult decision. Do I spend this evade token to protect myself, or do I hold on to it to re-engage my cloaking device? So I really, really like how that plays yeah, out. That was a, and that it was makes the generics one. quite viable. Mm -hmm. I all right. Think. Well, I think we've gotten through uh, all, the, all the Imperial ships. I think that's it. Yeah, that's everything, right? There's nothing else. No, nothing. Uh, nothing there's nothing. There's no, there's no, there's no oh. hugely popular uh, oh, <laughs> fan favorite <laughs> ship out there. No. <laughs> okay. Late to the party as it was in first edition. <laughs> Here is... How long is the gunboat thread now? 400 pages? Real long. <laughs> Let's just put out the configs too. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. I'm gonna... Just going to give you... That was funny. Yeah, why not? Got, All right, us. so it still has two configs. It's still got slam. It's still got some really cool stuff. White reload's really fun. Uh, still the, the, the gunboat that you know and love. Got this dial. It's got the ordnance loadout. So we play around with disarm tokens as we did in first edition. So this one, you know, lets you configure your ship to have torpedoes and missiles, uh, and and w when you slam, you can still uh, perform targets. Now you can't shoot really, uh, really um, 
potent missiles, but you can still utilize cluster missiles or, or some of those lower attack dice missiles. So still a really strong card. And then, of course, you also continue to have the assault configuration, uh, it's almost which like it allows you to leverage though, those cannons. So the gunboat very much still and, in you know, the faction, very much uh, the same kind of general flavor that it had in first edition. So strong, we, strong card. And for being so patient, we'll, we'll throw in one more there. Show yeah, off why not? one of the more favored ace pilots of this mm -hmm. ship. So after you gain a disarm token, if you are not stressed, you may gain a stress token to remove your disarm token. Which I think Ooh. is identical. Yep, just really strong. Lets you slam yeah. and then uh, and then fire. So nothing nothing wrong okay. about that, but it has that stress cost to keep it under control a little bit. Uh, gunboat still formidable and very different from the bomber, which is what I really like. This is very much focused on missiles and cannons. And the bomber, of course, is I bet you Phil's on wrath is so going to be seeing, like the most that broken, that insane, imperial strong specificity pilot. of chassis. Yeah. So there it is. There it is. Gunboat. Firmly in the game. Oh, yeah, and in what, what the heck? Here's a weapon that the gunboat can use. Uh, <laughs> and, and slam with Kasabi ca comes into play. The heavy laser cannon. Four attack dice. After really mean, but it is bullseye arc specific. So again, you really have to have uh, pinpoint accuracy and good precision flying. You're not just going to bolt this huge gun on and blast away with it. You need to pay attention to your maneuvering. You need to line up those bullseyes. And it's interesting, too, because you know with the... Uh with the Star Wings pretty decent maneuverability, getting those bullseye mm -hmm. shots is easier. Right. But sometimes you're in that situation where you're like, oh, do I want to try to set up this like bullseye next turn? Do I go for this mm -hmm. lower quality shot now? There's a lot mm -hmm. of interesting choices there. Yep, and if, of course, you don't have the bullseye, you're relegated to your weak attack die. Mm -hmm. So what's really interesting in, in that respect is that there are pros and cons to having you know, fewer baseline attack dice with the heavy laser cannon. If you're a B-wing, you miss a heavy laser shot, you're still rolling three attack dice. It's not as big a deal. It's more of a bonus. But if you're a two die ship, you miss your heavy laser shot. Your uh, your offense is cut in half. Yeah. So it's it's a very they have very different play styles, mm -hmm. and and I kind of appreciate that. Yeah. All right, we're gonna keep it rolling. Uh, we've had a request for uh, Countess Riyadh. She's still great. There she is. Um, she's not she doesn't make everything green anymore, but she's still incredibly, incredibly good. So oh, okay. uh, when she Slight executes a straight nerf, maneuver, she can the increase spirit. the difficulty to uh, execute it as a choreograph. So she still has those flexible choreographs, but they're not, you know, they're not green anymore. They're white. So right. she's a little she's more still under control. Mean, though. Oh, she's yeah. real and good. She's defender real good. is a monster. Yeah, no, yeah. she's uh, she's no no flipping joke. Yeah, and, uh, and she's those... got that super cool red uh, paint scheme, of yes. course. So if you've got your first edition red defenders, you still have a really great pilot to use that with. Or if you don't have one, you can pick, still Speaking pick Speaking of one. monsters <laughs> that a few of you have seen before. Yeah, yeah, if you haven't seen Vader already, he is a beast. Force rating of three. He can perform tons of actions in a turn. You've seen that the dial is improved. Uh, you've seen that the advanced targeting computer is built in. Now, one of the cool things about that built-in targeting computer is he still has the system slot available. So that's, uh, that's something that we can spoil, actually, oh, as sure. well. I think Vader, personally, I think Vader pairs really well with one of two upgrade cards. I think he pairs really well with advanced sensors, mm -hmm. and I think he pairs really well with the much cheaper option, which is the uh, advanced targeting computer. Uh, fire, so, or fire, yeah, fire control system. Uh, fire it's control system pairs really well with oh, it's, advanced it's targeting computer. There we go. Yeah, so it's really simple. Uh, it lets yes. you keep your lock up, and it lets you reroll one die. Combined with Darth Vader's force points, that means you're, generally oh. speaking, not having to spend that target lock, which means you can save his force points for that's barrel it. rolls or uh, you know, other actions. So I think that, that's really helpful. Advanced sensors, again, very similar to the way that it was in first edition. Just a quality card, especially when you can dial in a maneuver and then, oh, yeah. you know, uh, or do an action and then, you know, uh, no, use so Darth well Vader's it. pilot ability to perform another action. It's just a, a strong choice on, on Vader. It gives him a lot more maneuverability. And all right, we got a, just a handful of other cards. Echo is still her beautiful self. And uh, just a slippery, slippery beast with those uh, banked barrel rolls. And with the new Stygium Array, that ability really comes into play because if you can, again, if you can stay out of those arcs, you can recloak. So she's getting to use that ability uh, without necessarily needing an attack. So Echo's a lot of fun. Here's the Grand Inquisitor. He's very similar as well, uh, but of course, force point related. Um, 
Uh, now he's he's grand now. Yes, yes. he's, he's grand. Uh, because we know now know that there are multiple inquisitors, and he's the grandest. And he's the grandest of them all. And he is very strong. He's still got that really great, you know, wants to stay at range three. But he can also protect himself from range bonuses at range one now. So he's just he's a very very powerful force using pilot. And sure he pairs really well with Vader. Yeah, Vader's thing, but it said once per turn on the other upgrade. So his crew is going to add that force. Rating. Now, people have been wondering how that works. Like, well, what happens if I add a force rating to an existing force using pilot? Sure. Do I, do I re recur two charges a turn? Well, no. You, you only ever recur one force charge a turn, but you increase the cap. So if I add the Inquisitor to a, a ship that has two force points, it now has three force points. So it's going to start higher. It's going to be able to regen up higher. But it's not so potent as to regen two force points around. That's a, that's a big and very important distinction. Yes. And also, it does give a ship that doesn't have a force rating at all a force rating. Yes. Yeah, so if you don't have a force rating, uh, you've brought a force user along, he can, use, uh, he can use that force rating. Now, the force rating of crew is always going to be low because we didn't want you to be able to add, well, you're not at the controls. You're not able to leverage right. the full power of your you know, mastery of the force. But you're going to gain a little bit of health for, for the pilot, and you're going to gain a cool ability. So I, I, I'm a fan of the, the Inquisitor's ability. Well, that's it for the Empire. A lot of fun stuff in there. For real this time. We're for real this time. <laughs> no secret 15 yes. ships or whatever. Yes. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Wait, you should wait to the end of the video, just in case. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> There's going to be oh, a 10-second little uh, trailer for, been the mean next, if we for the had, next unbox. If we'd not done the, uh, <laughs> the gun vote until <laughs> after <laughs> Star Wars had done right. that. Oh, that would be brutal. That yeah. would have been We're real not mean. that We're not that mean. No. And we get to my favorite faction. What's up, Sean? The scum of the earth. The scum. The scum of the galaxy. Yeah. And uh, they have retained all of their deviousness and, oh, and then some. Uh, yep, and you get master, again. You get this extra pack that contains all of the new pilots. So if you already own fire, as many fire sprays as you'll ever want, as many Fang fighters as, ever, as you'll ever want, but, but you want the spinning wings. Come on. You, well, you do want the spinning. Let's be real. <laughs> but no, regardless, you've got as you've got all the fire sprays you can you can handle. Well, you get the punch for uh, Koshka Frost, a new pilot. Uh, Joy Rekoff, a new Fang pilot. Uh, and they are there and available to you for your first edition purchases. Um, and I'll just spoil those because they have some pretty fun little abilities. All right. And you also get the okay. Marauder title. So this is Kath Scarlet's. Oh, Kath Scarlet's cool. Marauder. And it is a strong pilot ability. It gives you some flexibility. Let's talk favorite scum. Ah, uh, yes. Favorite scum, wow. upgrade cards, favorite pilot cards. Scum. I'll just leave these up for a while. Sure. It'll be a minute. Right. I, have, I have a favorite ship for the scum faction, uh -huh. and I was so happy to see it do so well at the very last mm. first edition World Finals. It is, of course, the IG-2000, the IG-88. All right, so which, which ones do you want? I want to show, I want to show them all. Let's show just show them all. <laughs> just, let's just do yeah. it all. all right. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, here, here's the thing. It's, so the world, it's the world's winning list. You're right. You're right. Let's, let's we spoil it. All. And we, you, the real reason we have to show them all is because I think that you have vastly improved this <laughs> You have vastly improved my love for this show. I didn't even think that was possible. <laughs> you've done it. And you've done it through subtitles. Oh, these are great. So what do we have? Well, we've got IG-8 A, B, C, and D. We've got the aggressive automaton. We've got a brutal battle droid. We've got a conniving contraption. I'm going to to see them all. I can't and of it. course, a deadly device. So fortunately, English has <laughs> so many synonyms, we were able to get away with this. Turns out it's a useful language. Oh, a lot to our created. old English poetry. <laughs> so, uh, the I, ship itself has changed a little. Um, but we'll get into that when we actually uh, get to the IG itself. Sure. But, so, uh, I can't speak to all languages, but I know for sure that uh, German was able to maintain the uh, alliterations. <laughs> Fantastic. So good, hopefully everyone else did, too. Good work, Germans. Um, <laughs> so those, uh, those, <laughs> those players, uh, that English is not your native language, and uh, you might get huh. the fun alliterations as mm -hmm. well. <laughs> that was like way too quick. All right. Uh, so, uh, if let's not, see. I encourage you to acquire the English language cards for the <laughs> subtitles alone. Oh, yes. Well, speaking of cool <laughs> subtitles, actually, let's go to my favorite card, which is Asajj Ventress. Oh, yeah, Asajj is great. So, 
Scum does not have a lot of Force users. No, appropriately enough. But you know what? A few of those, you know, galactic oh, or those uh, those Clone Wars awesome. characters didn't really end up sticking with one side or the other. They kind of went off on their own. And Asajj is really the classic example of that. She had someone who went off as a force of her own. Uh, oh. Let's see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Asajj is a ton of fun. Um, she's still got that really strong ability. It is leavened a little bit because the defender, if they don't want to take the stress, they can remove that green token. So it's not quite as oppressive as it used, as it used to be. But you know, just having that force rating of two is extremely strong on a ship with this much defense, offense, and uh, you know, hull and shields. Um, Eight hull and the two other shields. cool thing is we have these different attack abilities. So the shadow caster is no longer a three and a three. It's now a three and a two, which I think is a little bit more appropriate for its mobile arc. Um, it, it rewards you for getting those front die or front arc shots because um, you get a higher attack ability. But you know, you still have that flexibility of that that turreted arc. So I, I like I like Asash a lot. Yeah, I, I, uh, I picked I picked my my favorite card. Oh uh, heck yeah! We were able to touch up on the YB. He doesn't love a murder lizard. <laughs> Well. Chassis in general. <laughs> um, I love the YV-66. Yeah, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool ship. Reinforced cult appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yep, again, it's a big tanky ship. Its, it's primary thing is to deliver bounty hunters to where they need to go and, mm -hmm. and you know, protect your bounties once you have them mm -hmm. against whoever, you know, people would be he rescuers, other bounty hunters, etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, reinforced on the YV-66 just made a lot of sense. Uh, and Bosk still has that really powerful, really fun uh, pilot ability. So uh, remains one of those super scary characters that everybody loves. Who doesn't love a giant lizard? I, d I don't know. I've never met one. <laughs> Captain Kirk. <Kerr. laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Where do you want to jump to next? Yeah, should we just start going through ships? Yeah, let's do it. What, uh, well, let's, let's just get through the Z95 quick. Sure. Hey, it's a Z95. Oh, look. Look at that. Uh, distinguished from the Rebel version by having lower uh, initiative for the same points cost, but access to the illicit slot. Same as before. Yeah. Um, illicit yeah, slots better. are a lot of fun. Z95 has a few more tricks, but it is you know, paying more for its pilot skill than the Rebel version. So pretty straightforward. Um, but again, having that red barrel roll makes it a little bit more versatile. So I do like the Z95. It's a good addition to squads. And you know what? Let's, uh, let's just spoil. Uh, did I spoil? I spoiled Marauder already. Let's, uh, let's find Cat Scarlet. Oh, sure. Since uh, we can talk about you know, the, the advantage of having little support ships. So while Cat Scarlet performs a primary attack, if there is at least one friendly non limited, and that, what non limited means is uh, does not have that unique dot on the card. Uh, roll an additional attack die. Again, additional attack die is hard to come by, but what that really rewards is you, you can run Cat Scarlet with her gang, the Binary Pirates, uh, and she is rewarded for using those Binary Pirates as you know blockers, cannon fodder, you know, <laughs> trying to uh, oh, ram the enemy ship. Fun. So there's a whole strategy you can build around having some support D95s and the fire spray. So that's a lot of fun. Red Reinforce can keep the fire spray around longer. Um, so that's a that's a pretty fun little list. Um, we've seen the dial already. Y-Wing. These are going to be quick and easy. Same deal. Lower initiative, same exact statistics. Have the access to the illicit slot, yep. that kind of thing. Yep, exactly. Pretty straightforward. And I'm not sure the Y-Wing does have the illicit slot. I can't remember. But in any case, Scum Y-Wing. It's a Y-Wing. Y-Wings are cool. <laughs> Scum Hawk. It's a Hawk. Hawks are cool. Access to the Moldy Crow title, because the history of that ship passed through a lot of different owners. So if you want to run the Moldy Crow in Scum, you can do it. If you want to run the Moldy Crow in Rebels, you can do it. And uh, uh, let's let's spoil a couple of let's the do Palab. Yeah, yeah, the good old Palab. Good old Palab. Same Pal horrifying pilot ability. Same brutal, uh, brutal approach. But again, this is uh, really illustrating the Scum faction. It's stealing stealing focus tokens. You can bank those focus tokens with the Moldy Crow. Uh, so yeah, these are these are a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yes, Hawks, Hawks much better in, in this new edition, a lot, and still a lot of fun to fly with those pilot abilities. All right, we've been talking a lot about bounty hunters. You, you all know I love bounty hunters. Of course. Who doesn't? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so we really wanted Who to. Love giant monster man? That's right. We wanted to <laughs> focus. Uh, <sighs> come on. What's not to love? Uh, we want... <laughs> so much lizard. <laughs> so much lizard. Speaking of, let's just look at the Houndstooth title. So this is pretty familiar yeah, to those of last, you who sure. played the Nash Pup, all you know, 12 of you. Um, 
this one says uh, one Z95 headhunter can dock with you. Now we've standardized the docking mechanics. They're, they're a built-in you know, core rulebook mechanic, and so we can do a lot more with them. Um, the rules for docking are uh, all you know, in the rulebook, so we can simply refer to it as docking. So what does docking mean? Well, this means you can start the game with a Z95 docked. It doesn't have to be the Nash top pop. It can be any Z95. You can deliver, uh, you know, Nadrusu Lock into f in, into the combat, or Kato Lichos, or That's you know, anybody that you that you want. Um, but you can also build the. You can also bring the Nash top pop. Now the Nash top pop says you can only emerge. You can only deploy via emergency deployment. So you're an escape craft. You you can't deploy like the other like the normal Z95s. But your price point's going to be way, way, way lower. You're going to pay far less than a full ship for the Nash top pup. And when you do escape, it has the ship ability. You gain the uh, uh, houndstooth um, uh, ability uh, when the houndstooth is destroyed. So that's that's same as ever, uh, but slightly a slightly improved version of the Nash top pup and the, and the houndstooth. You don't have to run the Nash top pup. Uh, other notable bounty hunters, including Slave One. Now, Imperial Boba Fett is gone, but his legacy lives on, as you can see from the Slave One title. The cool thing about oh, this is you can have uh, both Boba Fett pilot abilities on the same ship now. You mm -hmm. can get the, the really versatile power of um, at rerolls yeah, at Slave range One for enemy ships, so. but you also get the uh, high initiative maneuvering of Slave One. So just a strong ability. And hey, that torpedo slot you're all using so often is, is it's still back. <laughs> oh, yeah. What we're talking about, here's we can talk about for the. Uh, yeah, we might as well, right? As well. The fire spray is vastly improved. Uh, it has one turns. It's a medium based ship. It's much more it's maneuverable. Got wow. It's got talent rolls. It's more maneuverable. It's more survivable. It's uh, just a much stronger ship as befitting such a potent bounty hunter as Boba Fett. He's going to fly the best. Uh, he's going to think he is the best. And it's got that red reinforce. But he's not a lizard. No, he's not a lizard. <laughs> We've got the Mist Hunter. You get a cannon slot. You get a white barrel roll. That's really quite useful on a medium ship. Oh, you don't um, have Very similar to, to First Edition. You can put and you've got the you Punishing want. One. Uh, the Punishing One is rather interesting. Oh, you perform primary attack if the defenders in your front arc roll an initial attack die. Uh, you lose your crew slot, and you add an astromech slot. So it's still, this is still Dengar's solo, uh, solo piloted ship. It plays in well with his pilot ability. And uh, you all remember the dark days of the, the contracted scout. Well, we've toned it down uh, substantially. So the dial is not nearly as good as it used to be. It keeps its asymmetry. Uh, it has a built-in single directional mobile arc with two dice. So again, no more 360-degree coverage. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can return its torpedoes to it now that it has been calmed down a little bit, and, and it, you know if it does turn out to be a, <laughs> another crazy thing, we can up its points via the app. Or yes. take the torpedoes away again. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could do that, but I think it's a pretty fun little ship when it does have that one torpedo slot. Yeah, I, I really like the change to the dial, though. It's much more mm -hmm. asymmetric. Yeah, it's it's just, you know, the, the original dial, the, the intent behind it was to force players to play a specific way, but it just turned out to be such a good choice, especially with unhinged astromech, yeah. that it kind of defeated the purpose of the dial. So the new yeah. one, the new one's actually working as intended. Uh, the barrel roll is red. The move your arc is red. It has no mm -hmm. white uh, arc rotate. Mm -hmm. So if it wants to change its arc position, it has to take a stress. So again, you have to think ahead with it a lot more. You have to play it uh, a lot more carefully. It's not so quite like they the, the, the powerhouse that it Still a good ship. So they're all just going to be astromechs and restricted. What else we got? While well, we're staying on the bounty hunters, we can yeah, jump back to this Yeah, here's one. your baseline YV-666 and the YV-66 dial. I believe largely unchanged. Maybe I think it got a, a green or a blue three. I'm not sure. I I, like I said, the uh, the 1.0 information is, has been overwritten. My, my code has been... Has been deleted. Uh, <laughs> we've got the Gan Feinsman, the uh, the classic Mist Hunter generic. Now the Mist Hunter is another ship that got the uh, red stop maneuver and a slightly improved dial. Mist Hunter, um, a slightly improved stat line too. It is now a medium ship. It has uh, a little bit more survivability. It has a white jam action, so it's quite good at disrupting the enemy. Um, and the dial's a little bit more generous. Still a lot of red. Still kind of a lumbering ship. But hopefully it'll find a much more interesting place in your squad now that it can be costed appropriately. That's the uh, 
That's the Mist Hunter. And on the subject of the Mist Hunter, yes, we want to mention that uh, there's a set of these uh, these titles um, with some uh, altered versions coming up at the uh, system open. That's right. Yeah, these Bounty Hunter titles: the uh, the Slave One, uh, the Punishing One, the uh, Mist Hunter, the Hound's Tooth. These are going to be really cool organized play alt art prizes. So if you're Bounty Hunter fans, go to some tournaments. There's going to be some really really cool prizes out there. Yeah. Another thing that has changed pretty substantially is the Seek. Uh, we have just basically built it as the heavy seek model um, with its additional shield and its weapon hard point. We were finding that to be far and away the most effective version of the seek. Uh, and because the scum faction has access to the Z95, didn't really have a role for that, that unarmed seek. But it's got the can uh, option of a cannon slot, a torpedo, or uh, a missile. And now that torpedoes and missiles are much more effective, I've actually you know, had a lot of success with torpedo armed seeks and that kind of thing. It's all built right into the, the ship. The, um, the dial is ever so slightly improved, so it remains uh, relatively so no ine inexpensive, but very helpful little addition to uh, a, a, a squad. So related ship from uh, uh, source material. Yes. So this is one we're going to have to go into a little bit. Uh, it's the Kirax. It's, it's got some Talon rolls, and it's got a, a pretty solid dial. One of the interesting things about second edition is uh, we have made modifications its own icon. Well, it was always an icon, but it actually, in the app, will have the number of modifications. It's an slot. upgrade with a bar. Exactly. It's not, the bar. Yeah, it, it no longer is, has to be universally applicable. So the Kirax has three upgrade slots, highly customizable. For modifications, specifically. Yes, yeah, so three modification slots. The Interceptor has two. So it goes sort of back to the Royal Guard title from first edition. It has more, more versatility. The base chassis is very stripped down, but you can add hull, shield, stealth, et cetera. And some ships will have none. You know, if, if we have a ship where we're like, well, that ship should never have stealth device. That ship should never have whatever. Or just, or just a just ship that isn't very modifiable thematically. Right? Yeah, thematically, they were very, you know, not customizable in canon. So we can take the mod slot off. Again, lets us control things better, lets us give ships their unique identity. And of course, the man, the myth, Talon the Bane. legend, the scourge of Tansari Point. The scourge of Tansari Point. Talon Bane Cobra, he's back. His ability is better. He's still super cool. Uh, he still blows up really easily. But yeah, he's fitting his original appearance. He <laughs> is still a ton of fun. Now he's gone. He's been demoted a little. His uh, his initiative is only five, but uh, that was sort of to make room for true sort of more canonical aces like Fen Rao or, or what mm -hmm. have you. Keep the number, the, the, the initiative six is super rare oh, yeah. like by, by design. So Talon Bane got a little bit of a demotion, but he's also a lot better and more cost appropriate in other oh, ways. Right. So Cobra fans, fear not, <laughs> he remains a force to be reckoned with. Speaking of the cartels, the Black Sun, we have the Kimogila. This was actually, of course, the inspiration for the widespread nature of the bullseye arc. Most ships, all ships have a bullseye arc. Few ships have built-in bullseye abilities, but the Kimogila does. It retains its dead to rights ability. It's very good at that pinpoint and it's targeting. On the medium base now. And it's on the medium base now, which mm -hmm. makes it a little bit more cumbersome in some ways, but um, it does allow for some really interesting new strategies, and it, it just looks, you know, more aesthetically pleasing and appropriate on that base. This dial has dial slightly improved. <laughs> yeah, it's a hammer. It just hits really hard. It's got a fair amount of hull. It's just a beefy, heavy fighter. Uh, it's not very maneuverable. It's not very fast. But and if you get directly in front of it, you blow up. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. So it's, it's a really interesting ship, fun to fly. Um, I'm a fan. Speaking of mechanics that we like so much, we spread them around. <laughs> That's right. Uh, here is the generic Shadowport Hunter. It is uh, your generic Lancer. Just a solid ship, super fast dial, um, strong choice. And my favorite scum ship, probably scum fighter, uh, in terms so of aesthetics personally. and play style, the Star so Viper. Really nice. um, I was Ooh, really excited the about the, the very last Star Viper Aces pack with that twisty barrel roll. Um, so the cool thing about the Star Viper now, the Star Viper has to use uh, those twisty barrel rolls. So it gives it a really unique play style, gives it a really interesting approach. The dial is slightly improved. It's got a lot more blue maneuvers on it, so it can recover from those Segnor's loops a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, it has linked actions, as you can see. It's, it's 
got linked red focus on its repositional stuff. And I think that's really cool. That, that gives it a lot of um, ability to arc dodge, but still retain you know, fully modified or partially modified uh, attacks, which as we know is, is pretty crucial. So the basic Star Viper, really, really strong choice. Uh, one of my favorite characters, Prince Shizor, um, has a basically a, a, a improved wording of his old ability. He's, he's not the kind of guy who's going to go down without sacrificing an army of goons first. So uh, again, this is where generic Z95s come into play, where big rolling tanks like uh, the YV666 come into play. You can keep Shizor around for the end game where his high initiative is going to shine. Uh, it's a very scum ability too. Yes, absolutely. You know? And then probably my favorite fire spray pilot of all is, is Guri here. Um, Guri makes use of this new calculate action. Um, calculate is a new action. It's essentially a focus that can only change one uh, focus result into either a hit or an evade. So it's weaker. But what it lets you do is it lets you play around with stuff. So Guri has weaker actions than your generic Star Viper. Um, you know, Calculate is not as good as focus. Linked barrel roll to Calculate is not as good as linked barrel, barrel roll linked to focus. But uh, at the start of the engagement phase, she can gain a focus token if she's got an enemy at range zero to one. So she's a human replica droid in the, in the fluff. Uh, she can kind of simulate some of the things that human pilots can do, but only under specific conditions. So she's got some pros and some cons, but she remains a really, really strong pilot and a ton of fun to fly. And she can get focus and calculate if you stack it up right. Exactly, yep, and that gives her more defense. So she can have a focus token and a calculate token. She can use the focus on offense or on defense. And it's just, it makes her a really strong, really flexible. interesting, flexible pilot. So she's one of the top, top scum aces. Uh, in first edition, she remains the, the same you know, level of power in, in second. So really fun. I like her a lot. Fang fighters, I think these have been spoiled already, but they're really solid. Concordia face-off is better than ever. Um, still rewards hyper-aggression, getting into the enemy's firing arc, mm -hmm. um, dodging arcs if you can. Um, but again, with the removal of Push the Limit, it's not the same kind of repositional power as the Interceptor. It's got different strengths. Yeah. Um, it's a little more durable, and it is uh, a little more survivable under specific circumstances. Um, so it's just a very different play style, and that's one of the things that we really like about it. Slightly different dial from an Interceptor. It's got Talon rolls instead of Segnor's loops. doesn't have as much blue. So uh, you know, even though they're, they're both Interceptor class chassis, it's definitely a different beast to fly. So Fang Fighter's really strong, really fun. Uh, quad Jumpers have some really fun baked in tricks. And they changed a little. They did change a little. Oh, just a little. Just a little. They have the uh, Space Tug Tractor Array built in because they're tractor boats. That's what they're equipped with, and that's a perfect place for a ship ability. Um, yeah, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, what's changed? Well, the big thing is that that reverse two. Yeah, that's an interesting maneuver, right? Like, it makes sense for a tugboat. You want to be able to <laughs> tractor something up and pull it into, into dock. So it's one of the few ships in the game that can actually kind of hover around in the same place. It can go forwards and backwards. It, it remains super flexible. And uh, tractor tokens are really potent uh, force. So um, again, it rewards you getting in that bullseye arc, getting close. You can, you can tractor uh, more effectively. You can hit medium ships. You can hit large ships. Um, Unkar Plutt, we'll spoil him. Our miserly portion master. That's right, one quarter portion. And also, at range zero, have a tractor token. So <laughs> again, he's a pro and a con. You don't want to be touching him with your own ships, but... Uh, he's a bully. He is, that's right. He's going to mess He's gonna mess you up. So he's fun. Uh, the quad jumper, not super flexible, not super survivable, but a very strong support ship and a really huge disruptive force uh, you know, for your enemies. That's a very scummy support ship because it's not so much helping your allies as making Absolutely. your enemies miserable. People were uh, curious about the Skurg. Skurg retains its double bomb ability. It has a barrel roll now. It's still got a pretty good dial. It's still uh, got a lot of health. It's just a strong fighter bomber. It uh, remains a potent force. Uh, no longer available to the Rebels. It's one of the few ships that uh, transitioned from, mm -hmm. faction, from one faction to another entirely. And it also jumped size. Um, yeah, we've gotten some requests for Dengar, of course. He's a, he's a, a powerhouse. Here's, yeah, here's a medium Captain Nim. Um, Dengar remains a force to be reckoned with. After you defend, uh, if the attacker is in your front arc, you may spend a charge, that means it's once per round, uh, to perform a bonus attack against the attacker. So um, 
you know, you can track it a little bit more easily. Dengar has no built-in front arc. You have to have that. You either have to have your mobile arc positioned in the forward position, or you have to have those torpedoes equipped, because you can send a torpedo back at you. Still a really nasty pilot ability. Still really frightening at pilot skill, or at initiative six, but a lot more under control than he was in first edition. So he keeps that flavor, but he, um, he has, he's been chilled out a little bit. And here's his crew card, sort of keeping, keeping that reprisal theme going. I'll leave that up for a while for you to absorb. We'll look at some crew cards here. We didn't. Let's, uh, let's, let's show off your favorite thing. Yeah, that's right. We, got to, we still have the, uh, the IGs. So again, this is another ship that really plays into those calculate tokens. One of the things that I like about the new IG-88A is it can pass calculate tokens around. So this doesn't mean, this means it's not limited to just uh, other IG-88s. It can pass calculate tokens to 4LOM. It can pass calculate tokens to GURI. You can build kind of a droid army and, droid and revolution, to support that. Droid revolution, if you will. Uh, or you can do the classic, as we just saw, world's winning, uh, you know, double IG list. Um, IG-88B still gives you that bonus cannon attack. Cannons have been calmed down a little bit, but uh, you know, the, the list that won was a control list. So um, it still has the classic IG-2000 to gain double pilot abilities thing, so you can season your list to choice. Um, it still has the power of IG-88C, which is after you boost, you get that evade action. But again, it's an action, so you have to Make sure that you can complete it. You, can, you can't be stressed to do it. Um, and finally, we have uh, Segnor. IG-88D wasn't seeing a lot of play, but this deadly device has been improved in second edition, so it's a little bit more flexible with those repositional styles. So I think, I think that the double IG list will continue to be strong and fun to fly. Uh, they're on a medium base now. That, that really changes things up. And their dial remains excellent. It is... Uh, it is still one of the most blue dials in the game. <laughs> He's not an organic life form. He doesn't have to worry about those G-forces or those issues. And yeah. let's explain Calculate quickly. So yeah. Calculate is essentially crappier focus. Yeah, Calculate that's pretty much all it is. Calculate is a weaker version of focus, but mm -hmm. this is really important. It is weaker at the outset, but as you see with the IGs, they have their advanced droid brain. Yes, so under most circumstances, when you do the calculate action, you actually end up with two calculate tokens. Yes. That's better than a focus token 98% of the time. So what, so what yeah. it does, to pull, what, to pull what calculate does normally nowhere. is it, it's a focus, <laughs> that, it, calculate is essentially a focus that can only change one of your results. Mm -hmm. right. um, but now suddenly with that advanced droid brain, you get two, you can change results on two different roles. Yes, that, that improves your defense substantially. Oh, sorry, yeah, and it means that you can improve both offense and one defense title, on the same turn. Uh, the you don't usually you roll more than one focus result on a single If you are in the primary arc, role. if they're in your primary uh, arc, you get a. You extra almost back. never roll triple eyes. Uh, so in most circumstances, having two calculate tokens is a little bit better than having one focus token, but not all. So that, that's an interesting, an interesting facet to to droids, and it, what it lets us do is it lets us play around with those mechanics. And, yeah, and a great do example is Guri. Guri being able to get two focus would probably be way too strong. Right. But Guri being able to get a focus and a calculate, that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right. We've got some more crew here. We've got uh, Jabba the Hutt. Jabba. Another double crew, classic crime lord. Lets you keep your elicits going a little bit longer. He's a little simpler in this edition. Uh, everything's built in, he doesn't have to put upgrades. Uh, uh, up on there. Um, so Java, Java's a lot of fun. He can support uh, a squad that's built around illegal goods and illicit technology. Um, Bosk is a gunner now. Bosk is still the raging lizard monster we all know and love. Uh, if you perform a primary attack that misses, if you are not stressed, you must receive a stress token to perform a bonus primary attack against the same target. He doesn't like to miss. Stresses him out, but he gets, to, he gets another crack at him. I mean, so. I like that fist shaking. And again, he's a new slot, so he can, uh, he can go into ships with a gunner slot, gunner. which is pretty helpful. And why don't we talk about how tractoring works quickly? Sure. Which segues nicely, actually, with this next card. Which yeah, so, so tractor tokens are uh, orange tokens here. And basically, what they do is that means they go away at the end of the round. So orange and green mm -hmm. are sort of similar, and then blue and red are sort of similar in that they yeah. go away at other timings. That's right, that's right. And tractor tokens in second edition, it takes one token to uh, move a small ship. They're easier mm -hmm. to manipulate. It takes two tokens to move a medium ship, and it takes three tokens to move a large ship. So it's really hard to use tractor beams on large ships, 
but Ketsu Anyo lets you pile them up. And of course, as we know, barrel rolling a large ship is not something you could do in first edition. Uh, you can do it now, but it takes some setup. And it's really, really strong. If you can throw them onto you a rock, a you can ship put them into a bad position. Um, so th that allow th things like the uh, Space Tug Tractor Array, the Shadow Caster, Ketsu Anyo oh, Crew, um, there's a tractor beam uh, yeah. cannon. So uh, tractor beams are a little hard to pull, harder to pull off on large ships than on small ships, but the even large ships can be maneuvered if you pile up enough tokens. And that's one of the cool things about the new mechanics. And also noteworthy, a subtle change, um, but uh, now I believe the person who places the tractor token actually gets to move the ship. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, so that is a subtle change, but you can tractor your own ships. So uh, for positional advantage. So the space tug tractor arrays don't need to specifically say you can tractor your own ships. That's right. They just let you do it, and then yep. you get to throw them around. Yep. Also, it reduces their job. So yeah, I, we're, we're getting towards the end here. Uh, are there any cards that you guys want to show off while we've got this live stream going? Is there anything out there in the community that people are desperate to see? We'll check out a couple Major. more. Major. Uh, I'd like to show off my favorite astromech. Oh, yeah. It's pretty much unchanged. <laughs> but he does illuminate something. This is, is the this is the perfect scum card, really. Yes. Like, you're like, how is this useful? You is this useful? Also, players. that's really mean. Like, who, who's who's drawn is this? Guy. But you know, there's there's obviously there's some some built-in cases. There's Dead Man Switch is still in the game. Uh, there's there's uh, there's these yeah. corner cases where it's actually advisable to, to backstab your, your own allies in order to get advantage. And and what could be scummy, really? And another thing it illuminates is that, that way, you'll notice it doesn't let you crazy. lock your allies anymore, and that's because it doesn't have to, because you can that's already right. do that. You can yep. tar you can target lock, lock allies, you can target lock friendly ships and and, and obstacles as well. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to show you. We're just going to spoil all the scum hawks because they're fun. There is a they're, they're, <laughs> they are a cult they are a cult classic from first edition. A lot of hawk boosters out there who were sort of drawn to its uh, <laughs> its flaws as well as its joys. I think they still will be. Yeah, I think so too. It's it's got a really interesting character, but it's much more effective as a baseline ship. And the yeah. pilot, the uh, the pilot abilities are just as good as ever. Yeah, Dace uh, bone arm is improved. I will say one thing about Dace is it lets us play with that space of having recurring charges and a cap that's larger. So his ability mm -hmm. requires you to spend all three, but you recover one each turn. Right. So you can do it every once in a while. It's not an all-the-time ability. Um, it so. ch charges back up. It exactly. Has to, it has to, um, you know, you have to pick your rounds carefully because you yes. don't have access to it every round. So we'll have a few other cards that have that similar effect where they kind of are on a timer of sorts, mm -hmm. that they have a cooldown, if you will that you can use them, they'll charge back up and use them again. So that's a, a fun use of that space. We should show, we should show an illicit because uh, oh, sure. oh, that's a good idea. it's a faction defining thing. Indeed. I was and I want to show off Forlom because he's still one of my, oh, oh sure. Forlom, we'll do a couple more. There's so oh, many rapid. cards. I'm thinking about like trying to do a video this after this, this of like showing. Oh yeah, my oh, yeah that card's crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Too many to do. Let's, let's do yeah. Yeah. I think I want to do some highlights. Crew. Uh, there we go. Sure. That'll do. Uh, pilot, please. All right. Well, well, while we dig that up, I want to show off another one of the very rare Scum Faction Force users. And one of the really cool things about this card is, uh, you know, it has some thematic tie-ins. Uh, you can put them in either either in a scum, scum list or, or in a list with Ezra Bridger, Ezra Bridger, appropriately enough. So, if so you can, can kind of get that, that you know tempted by the dark side mechanic on the table, and he recovers force charge if he's damaged. So he's very very helpful. And if you put him on a, a Ezra pilot ship, that increases Ezra's force rating, which uh, is going to let him survive a little longer, use his ability more, and synergizes with Ezra's uh, stress related stuff. Yes, absolutely. Also, you can equip dark side force upgrades. Dark side. Uh, we haven't spoiled upgrades. any of those yet, but that offers <laughs> even more list building potential. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and then my favorite bounty hunting duo, I just wanted to show off Zakus and Forlom. I think Forlom has one of the nastiest, Ooh, most yeah. effective, trolliest abilities in the entire game. Probably about as trolly as we want to let any ability be. Yeah, it's really <laughs> high up there. And of course, the, the G1A dial is full of red. Um, and, but that's, that becomes a, a pro instead of a con, especially since he's got the zero stop maneuver. Mm -hmm. um, Forlom remains really good. And Zuckus, uh remains really good as well. Um, you can get stressed with Zuckus and pass it off with Forlom. So they're a really great pair. Huge fan of those two. Um, show you a couple of illicit upgrades. 
Uh, these are classics from first edition. Cold King device is a little bit better. It doesn't break uh, immediately. It has two charges. Um, so uh, it's still not as reliable as a dedicated chip like the Phantom. It's still kind of a well, you are together. together. Ex ex ship. Exactly. <laughs> so it's still very scummy, but it's a li little less vulnerable to like random generation uh, of a bad result. You can you can keep it around a little longer. So it's a little more interesting. Dead Man Switch, same as it ever was. Really super great. It's a my, great card. Didn't my really favorite art change. in the game, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just love it so that much. That grand getting ready. Look at to... that guy. He's just, he's in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to win it. And then here's another, uh, one last ability. Moralo Evol, his cool crimson YV666. He's got a really crazy uh, setup-based ability. Yeah, Frank, mm -hmm. you want to talk about this? You designed this. This is one of yeah. my favorite of your designs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I really enjoyed this, uh, this idea of being able to, to pretend like you died or that kind of effect. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I it's, enjoy being able to play with other aspects of the game that we just haven't touched, but we're always kind of ready for, for us to be able to interface with. So mm -hmm. having charges allows you to do an ability that we just couldn't have done in first edition, because it's yep. like, how could you possibly track? I mean, you could just remember you've done it or not, but. And having reserve. Yeah, for, yeah reserves are a whole new concept. Reserve. We haven't gone into that much, but it's, a, it's a more design space. You can put stuff into reserve and bring it out of reserve. That's yep. how docking works. Exactly. That's how That's various setup abilities work. Bad. So, well, yep. so cool. exactly. I like that. Crew. So, wow, a lot of stuff. Holy crap, my voice is gone. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. We're super psyched for this. We hope you are too. Hopefully, we gave you a really good taste of what's to come. Uh, I've been Alex Davey. I'm, I've been Frank Brooks. <laughs> I guess we still are. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I hope to continue to be next Brooks. <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right, well, wow, guys. Um, a lot of information. So you, 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 it definitely seems like you're getting more than just the ability to reuse your same stuff. That's what I'm thinking. What would you think of? If you would flee the battlefield for Morallo. Um, so that's like if you would, uh, if you'd have to leave. So, -wee. let's let's shrink things back down. So, what do you guys think? You guys, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. That was a lot of stuff. There's a lot of processing that has to happen here, um, just to kind of run it down. B wings are getting a one talon roll. HWK is totally fixed. Um, medium bases are cool. Uh, oh boy, let's see. Some ships are no longer eligible to factions. Fire spray is not Imperials anymore. Uh, Skurg is not Rebel anymore. Um, we've got the Outrider. I, th I really like the new Outrider. E-Wing, huge buff. Han Solo's ability is nice. Miranda's nerfed. Um, Deathfire, probably one of the funniest abilities. Palpatine has changed. I'm not crazy about the new Palpatine, but it seems like he's more reasonable. Um, you don't have to buy a $100 ship to get Palpatine anymore. You can buy a $50 convert conversion kit. So there's that. Uh, the Interceptors look nice. I don't know if it's going to be enough for them. I think the whole gameplay change as a whole will have to be what fixes defend um, Interceptors. It does say that the app is going to give Interceptors also two built-in mod slots. Punisher got buffed. Defender got buffed. Um, but yeah, I, I really like Cat Scarlet in the uh, Fire Spray, and especially with the Marauder. That one looks really cool. I'm excited about that one. Um, the Kirax, we'll have to see. Um, the new, I think, uh, Zuckers of Forlum and the new Mist Hunter has, has the potential now. You can put cannons on it. Uh, so that might be nice. So excited about a lot of that. Let's see. Um, that's about it. It's a lot more to process. Um, but Java and oh, like all of your epic people that showed up. I wanted to. You know what I would have liked to have seen the Leia crew if they still have Leia crew because she was kind of useless. Um, so I wonder what they've done with her. Maybe she has charges and she can work more than once. If she's doing the same kind of thing, it's possible. It's possible the new HWK is going to be very, very exciting. Um, I like what they did with Sabine. I thought that was cool too. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Very interesting. Uh, all right, so I'm going to process this a little bit. Um,
All right, let me look at some of your some of your feedback here. Uh, All right, calculatus, yeah, focus, but only one eye result. Um, yeah, it, it may it may get a lot shorter of, as as a game because you have less regen now. So, and, and I'm okay with that. I think that's I think that's pretty cool. You can play more games in less time, uh, but it's still long enough to feel like you get a payoff. Um, let's see. Let's see. HWK does look like a fun ship. Um, Am I gonna break down? Am I gonna do breakdown videos um, of these? I'm gonna try to do like some highlights. I'll probably be doing more videos as we get more spoiler articles because they said they they said some of the stuff that are not gonna spoil yet, and they didn't give us everything. Um, and some of the stuff hadn't changed, so I don't think it's really worthy of like breaking down the Z95. The Z95 didn't really change. Tie fighters didn't really change. The M3A6 didn't change a whole lot. You know, a lot of those stuff just didn't change very much. E-wing was one of the big. I have to go back and I have to grab screenshots out of the... I wasn't going to start taking screenshots while I'm streaming it for you guys, so I have to go back and once they put it up and, and then get screenshots and everything. But the E-Wing is just a lot better now. It's like three hull, three shields, um, and it has more more actions and much a better dial. Uh, I don't know what the costs are because we don't have point costs that we can talk about, but... Uh, yeah, it has it has a lot of that, a lot of the linked actions. The only thing I don't know for sure, and I was asking in the stream, is if a uh, a linked action like boost into focus and red focus, if that's considered one action. So because there's some things that say you take a free action, could you take a free linked action? Like Darth Vader, for example, can Darth Vader take you know a, a focus and then a, and then a linked action or something like that? Uh, and and I don't know if the linked actions count as two actions or count as one action for the purposes of bonus actions. Uh, they also, one of the things they, they, they pointed out is that like with all the bonus attacks, like we're talking about Corrin Horn, ships as a whole are capped at one bonus attack. So at most you're going to be able to attack two times. So you can't work any like, you know, double attack into a gunner triggers another double attack and you're attacking four times. Or whatever, A wing's got uh, A wing's got a little bit of help. They got some some buffs and some uh, I think some better action stuff, uh, but I I don't really remember. And I'm sure they're gonna have some kind of configuration. I like the configuration. The config card type is cool because I, it didn't. It kind of addresses one of the things we were talking about before here. It's like the whole generic titles. Like oh, this title just gives you this. I'm like okay, but it's you know now those are called configs as opposed to titles, and that makes more sense thematically. Um, yeah, and any any scum Z95 now can dock with the Hound's Tooth, so that's cool. It, the the Nashta Pup only flees a, a dying Hound's Tooth, but it'll be cheaper, whereas normal Z95s are going to be a little more expensive. So, yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, and then the other question um, from Jay Botero, and you're right, like like he, he points out that you know as as long as no action's done twice, is a linked action like if I've got focus and then I've got a white focus action and then I've got like white boost into red focus and I had two actions could I take both of those even though it's two one's a white focus one's a red focus are those considered the same action as far as game rules you know not like I'm trying to exploit I'm just trying to understand like what's legal and what's not you know interesting stuff the high defender is going to be nice they nerfed the uh, phantoms a little bit they're down to three attack so uh but cloaking seems like it's been a little more streamlined and it might be might be better might be better to cloak now cool stuff well i'm gonna see you guys later i'm gonna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me make sure you check out crabock.com you can hang out on my discord if somebody people somebody was asking for links of how to get into discord i have all that stuff on crabock.com on the like about me page all the media contacts i also have links to discord in this video description as well as all of my video descriptions so check that stuff out um, go. I'm gonna. If you see me at Gen Con, come say hi. Hopefully, we'll all have this stuff. So that'll be fun. Maybe we'll get a game going. Maybe we'll play at Gen Con. That'll be a lot of fun. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching.